13 weeks of the ACC regular season with one goal in mind, an ACC championship. The success of this team depends on me. Tougher against what? No matter we freaking play. And now the question arises, will Florida State reign as ACC champions for the fourth consecutive season? Will Georgia Tech defend the ACC Coastal Division title? In Hotlanta, the Yellow Jackets high octane offense led by Orange Bowl MVP Justin Thomas is fueled and ready to explode up the road to Charlotte with all eyes and dreams of an ACC coveted prize. So buckle up, the long wait is over. It's the opening night of college football at the ACC. Crank up 2015 here in Atlanta with the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. Our matchup tonight to get it started. It's the Alcorn State Braves out of the swag to take on Georgia Tech, number 16 in the country and the defending Coastal Champs in the ACC here at Bobby Dodd Stadium, Atlanta, Georgia. It is great to have you with us for our game this evening. Tom Warby along with James Bates. You know this guy for the 1996 National Championship team at Florida. And James, what a wonderful time of year. Let's get that ball in the air. And we get to get it going <laughs> early on a Thursday night. College football is so much fun. You know what's even more fun than college football? Winning college football games. We've got two teams down here that know just how that feels. The SWAC champions from last year in Alcorn State and last year's Orange Bowl champions champions in Georgia Tech. They know how to have fun and they know how to play some good football. That's what Georgia Tech did, winning 11 games, a coastal title, the Orange Bowl, and even beating Georgia at number five, Justin Thomas, a big reason. And beating Mississippi State in that Orange Bowl, your MVP right there, number five. We weren't sure what we had this time last year with then sophomore Justin Thomas. Everybody knows what they've got now. But last year, he had a lot of talent in the backfield and at wide receiver around him. This year, they're all gone. He's got to be a coach on the field, not just leading by example. Well, what an example this man set when he stepped back into near his hometown, Coach Jay Hobson. His Braves win their first WAC title since 1994, and they did it behind a six foot six double threat quarterback and John Gibbs. And oh, by the way, an offense that averaged 46 points a game in SWAC play last year. Not only do they have Gibbs back, but all other 10 starters from last year, 11 guys back. So based on the, those numbers, it sounds like the Georgia Tech defense could get a test tonight. And with more on that, down to the field and on the sidelines all evening long is Jen Hildreth. Well, Tom, I think one of the questions for this Georgia Tech team coming into the season would be the defense. Georgia Tech ranked next to last in the ACC in total defense a year ago. Part of the reason is because they had a bit of an identity crisis. They realized, especially after back-to-back -back losses to Duke and North Carolina, they couldn't just be the guys that held down the fort until the offense got back out there. DJ White told me, we took those losses personally. We realized we needed to step our game up. Defensive coordinator Ted Roof said, our guys got more aggressive after those losses, and it really showed in the takeaways. Through the first five games of the season, Georgia Tech had nine. In the next five games after those two losses, they had 17 guys finish top of the conference turnover margin. We'll see if that aggressive defense comes into the building tonight. Jen, thank you very much, and we look forward to your reports all evening long. And we thank you for joining us tonight in Atlanta, Bobby Dodd Stadium. We had a little bit of drizzle prior to the game, but it is perfect right now for Paul Johnson and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets to take on Alcorn State out of Lorman, Mississippi for the first time ever. And this is the first time Coach Johnson has faced this Alcorn State program. Alcorn State won the toss and deferred, so Georgia Tech is going to receive. Hayden McCraney is going to put it in the air for 2015. Jamal Golden is deep, but this is a short kick. Just to the 26 or so for Georgia Tech. And they will start just beyond their own 30-yard line. Well, I like that. A little sky kick, get everybody amped up, ready to run back there. Think they're going to sprint back. Big kickoff return. There is a flag on the play, James. We told you about Justin Thomas and all the great things he did last year as the starter all season. Five yard penalty for the dead ball spot. First down. So the penalty goes against the Braves. 
Our referee tonight, Stuart Mullins. Georgia Tech on its opening series to start 2015, winning 11 games last year, second most in school history. They went 6 and 2 in conference play, and it was an incredible season for the Orange Bowl MVP. Justin Thomas, a very humble young man who lets his play on the field do the talking. And he pitched this one. Snotty trying to turn the corner. Runs through a couple of tackles. And Snotty up close to the 45 yard line. Williams and Hearns combining on the stop. Now time for our impact players. It's brought to you by Toyota. We're going to hone in on a couple of key players. James for Georgia Tech, Scove, and Michael Summers out on the edge. Well, the old man but a new kid in number seven, Patrick Scove. He started at Stanford, and now the new be back here for Paul Johnson's offense. And boy, are they glad to have Michael Summers back. He was dinged up late in camp. And really, there are no skill position starters that return with Justin Thomas. Summers did start some last year, but that's just because Smelter went down with the injury. Eight yards on that first play. This is going to be enough for a first down across midfield for Scove. And he's into Braves territory. Darian Anderson, number 44 in purple and gold with a stop. How about this load at B-back? And you heard the roar from the Georgia Tech fans because all they've heard about all summer long is this big bad bruiser, number seven, Patrick Scove, who, believe it or not, is actually has got some wheels out in the open field, but where it'll really crush you there on the inside, a linebacker, a quick dive that's in your lap by that big guy in a hurry. Oh, it's tough. Coming right back up the middle, and it's Scove hopping over the 45-yard line into the waiting arms of Darian Anderson. Take a look at those impact players. Brought to you by Toyota for all corn State, James. Uh, Damon Watkins. He's as good as it gets there in the swag. The senior linebacker led the team with 79 tackles last year. And Anthony Williams, a four-year starter. There are two guys right there that meant so much to Jay Hobson turning this football program around and taking him to the SWAC title last year. Anthony Williams, number 19, had three interceptions last season. There's the pitch. Searcy down the sideline and knocked out at the 15. Quay Searcy on the carry for Georgia Tech. You hit him inside, boom, boom. You got five bodies in there looking at that dive. And then you get a couple good blocks on the perimeter. And Quay Searcy, who's had just as good a camp as anybody here for Georgia Tech, the young redshirt freshman showing off a little bit of speed. Great blocking on the edge. Looked like Ricky June, actually, with a nice cut block to get him outside. That was 31 yards on the carry by Quay Searcy. Out of Barnesville, Georgia, and Alcorn State has decided to take a timeout. Georgia Tech running deep into Braves territory. It's number one, Searcy, and the Jackets are knocking on the door. Back at Bobby Dodd Stadium, Alcorn State and Georgia Tech for the first time ever between these two programs, and the Jackets are on the move. At the 14. Thomas. Room to run. Heading for the pylon. Did he make it in? Touchdown. It is a touchdown. Justin Thomas running 13 yards for the score. Justin Thomas on the quarterback. Jackets on the board first in their opening drive, and now Harrison Butker for the extra point. The hero of that game against Georgia at the end of the regular season last year. The field goal to tie it up in regulation and send it to OT where Georgia Tech beat the dogs. James Bates, five.
five plays, 68 yards, and it's all on the ground. Well, and it shouldn't surprise anybody. 72% of the time last year, opening drive, Georgia Tech scores. Good coverage initially by Alcorn State, but you got to get a little bit of pressure. And if you're not going to get a little bit of pressure, you've got to stay in those lanes. Or this guy right here, Justin Thomas, will burn you every single time. Good job by the offensive line. Deeper than a long time for Paul Johnson. James, now time for the time for the Ford keys to the game for the Braves and the Jackets. Well, a little taste of their own medicine for the Braves, meaning they've got to take it away from Georgia Tech. The defense of Georgia Tech turned it over 29 times last year. They've got to get some, but they've got to take care of it, too. For Georgia Tech, well, engineering and chemistry, not just technology, not just the engineering around here, but I want to see a class in chemistry. And I think, Tom, from that first drive that we saw some of that you know it's it's tough to go full speed with a Paul Johnson offense and in camp and bring it out to when the bullets are really flying on opening night you get a lot of young new guys on the same page but they look pretty crisp there to open it up here in 2015 Butker to kick it away Warford and Turner the deep men and there will be no return Justin Thomas Ran for eight touchdowns last season. He's already got one this year to cap off this drive. Uh, here's the nice outside after a couple inside punches by Sco, Quay Searcy, the red shirt freshman. And then after the timeout, the touchdown scamper by Justin Thomas beating everybody to the corner. You better take good angles. And boy, you have to play discipline, discipline defense. All Corn State against the Georgia Tech offense that is certainly just that. Well, now time to take a look at those Braves and John Gibbs Jr., the player of the year last season in the SWAC for the All Corn State Championship. As James mentioned, their first since the early 90s when Steve McNair was the quarterback of the Braves. And first nine win season, they actually had 10 since the early 70s. Again, whistles prior to the snap. And it is delay a game against the Braves. Some nerves and some things that are controllable. Opening kickoff. Hey, we've got a sky kick plan. How long have they been talking about that? Ten days, couple weeks. They had a, a penalty. Not that they would have gotten the sky kick ball, but you know, had they gone down and recovered that ball and had to turn it back over and kick it again. Boy, these are things you cannot do when you're coming in, number 16 team in the nation, and trying to pull a huge upset going the wrong way right now. The work out of the shotgun. Gibbs was looking to the near side to Warford. That one incomplete. And now second down. Here's our impact players brought to you by Toyota for the all-court state Braves. Obviously, Gibbs is going to be big tonight, but Darian Ragsdale is very underrated. A senior from Brandon, Mississippi, 691 yards last year. And watch out for Jordan Payne, and watch out for him all over the field. He's listed as a wide receiver, but can play tight end. We'll take some handoffs as well. And this is an offense, remember, that Fred Kais, the offensive coordinator, promised would be as fast as can be, slowing it up a little bit early. They'll try to run it unsuccessfully. Rip back to the 15. Adam Gotsis, number 96, wrapping up Darian Ragsdale. Oh, I'm excited to watch 96 play. Look at him come off the spot. That's just beautiful. Coach Ted Roof told us uh, yesterday in our meetings, he's really learned to fine-tune his game. He's really learned to use his hands. He uses his hat, bam, initial contact, then separates with his hands, gets rid of that blocker, and then goes and makes the play after shedding him. That was pretty by the Aussie, who hasn't played too much American football in his years. That was a loss of two, third and 18, as we approach the 12-minute mark of the first quarter. Gibbs stepping up. And that one is picked off. Chris Milton stepping in front of the receiver, and Georgia Tech has the pick. The big guys for all Corn State, watch them up front. They do a good job protecting, giving Gibbs time. Excellent job by Chris Milton because he knew he knew where the sticks were. 
He knew where Alcorn State was trying to get for the first down. Sat on those sticks, read the eyes of the big six foot six quarterback, and guess what? Opening drive defensively for Georgia Tech. They pick up right where they left off last year, creating 29 turnovers last season. They've got their first here in 2015. Milton had a couple of interceptions last year, including one return for a touchdown. Here goes Thomas, spinning away from a defender, and close to the 20. Quinton Cantu made the tackle on Justin Thomas. He's a junior from Prattville, Alabama. Yeah, look at the moves. It's like it's like JT Justin Timberlake. Maybe you just have those initials and you're just that smooth. This guy, the acceleration to turn his back to the defense and then to come out at a nice little burst. Look at the big guy leading the way, Shamir Devine. They were worried, hey, right guard, we gonna be okay there? That's the only new starter, Big 71. Look pretty good clearing the way on that drive. Thomas now on second and short. Scove has it up for a first down and he's close. To the 16-yard line, McNair, number 99, on the tackle for the Braves. Here's our CPI security red zone. And you see what Georgia Tech was able to accomplish a season ago. 81% down in the red zone, and that includes 51 touchdowns. Well, the way they're driving tonight, their, their bread and butter last year was third down. Well, they're better than anybody's been in a long time. Haven't had to deal with it yet. This is right up the middle for Scove again. David Watkins had the tackle for Alcorn State. You know, it's, I was about to say it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch if you're a Georgia Tech fan. If you're, if you're an Alcorn State fan or coach, it's not fun to watch. But what's interesting is how everything looks the same. Everything ties together. And, and it's, it's all working. So when one thing works, it all really starts to work because people start cheating, trying to stop guys like Scove, who already has four carries for 20 yards. Marcus Allen now has come into the backfield for Georgia Tech. He wears number 24. This one gets pitched. Lynch. And he goes down inside the five-yard line. Waves of weapons on the ground from this Georgia Tech team, which James last year averaged 342 yards on the ground. That was the best in the football bowl subdivision. Well, Lynch isn't even on our two deep. Just to show you, they may be new faces, but it doesn't mean that they're worried about all the talent that they've got out there. Guys like Marcus Marshall. We've already seen Searcy. Marcus Allen was in there. And don't forget, Broderick Snotty is back as well. And Lynch is a redshirt freshman. Let's go. Trying to power his way. Ran into Watkins. You'll see number 33 in purple and gold quite a bit. 60 tackles last year for Damon Watkins, and that was second best on the team. Watch him put his head in here. Nice leverage to stay low. Keeps those feet driving. Excellent job by 33. Damon Watkins, his defensive coordinator, Tony Pecoraro, he said, you know what, that guy... He's as good as it gets. You know, I let my daughter marry him. I want my son to be just like him. He's about as good as it gets. Skull trying to barrel to the goal line. That's a touchdown for the Jackets. He took Anderson into the end zone. Second score of the game for Georgia Tech. Tom, what is this about his sixth carry of the game already? If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> that's half the amount of carries that he had his entire career. Remember, he's a graduate transfer his entire career back at Stanford. Paul Johnson was right. He is going to feel like he's died and gone to heaven. Some miscommunication on the snap, and Butker never had a chance. Rodwell was holding, but was never able to get that one down. Nevertheless, go over to the end zone, James. Behind those big guys up front, man. I like the new guy up there, Devine, blocking just fine. Touchdown, Jackets. ACC College Football is brought to you by CPI Security, your local Ford dealers, and FanDuel, the leader in one-week fantasy football. Inside that Georgia Tech locker room, those are all the bowl logos. The most recent one, the Orange Bowl from last year in the win 
for the Jackets. They've jumped out to a 13 to nothing lead. Dusk settling in in Atlanta. That is a pretty picture right here from Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. That's unfiltered too, all you Instagram kids. That's natural. <laughs> so Butker once again to kick it away. Georgia Tech has won eight straight home openers and they've taken a 13 to nothing lead. Turner. To the 18. AJ Gray on special teams. Number 15, the freshman making the tackle. Hey, here's the Toyota tweet of the week, and it comes from head coach Paul Johnson, James Bates. <laughs> oh, you know what? Paul Johnson was he was in a good mood yesterday he in our sit down with him. Because you were in the meeting, that's why. Oh, I don't know. He, he was very happy to see you. You know, he, he's he's really close with West Durham, so you feel pretty good. You're not you're not kind of sure he must like you, Warmy. I think that's what it is. Wes will be back with his regular crew coming up next week. Happy to be here and holding the spot for West with 8.41 to go in the first and Georgia Tech up 13 to nothing. Braves are going to run it with Ragsdale. Up to the 23-yard line for number 22, Darian Ragsdale, the junior from Brendan, Mississippi. Our Toyota Impact players defensively for Georgia Tech and James, they look like this. We've got uh, Gotsis, who's already made a couple of solid tackles, and Jamal Golden in that secondary. Yeah, big Gotsis, great leader on the defensive line and a leader in the secondary, Jamal Golden. He had a stop on that last play. Well, Gamal, uh, Golden was fun to talk to yesterday as well. Already graduated with a marketing degree at Georgia Tech. Ragsdale tries the other side. He'll lean forward close to the 25-yard line to bring up third down for the Braves. Jamal Golden just talked about him, and he made the stop. 61 tackles a season ago and seven career interceptions. Mr. Football in Alabama, like you were saying earlier, Tom, I didn't know if you didn't go to school there in the state if they let you keep that title. <laughs> oh, what a great guy. He can keep anything, though. Jamal Golden leading that defense can they get a big stop here on third down now and the Braves just trying to stay out there on the field with John Gibbs looking over to the sideline Gibbs threw for 21 touchdowns last year but just trying to keep this drive moving had to throw it and he was pressured PJ Davis was number 40 breaking through the line of defense for the Braves almost 120 tackles last year PJ Davis has a nose for the football and he's untouched here. Well, Gibbs, not only lucky not to get sacked, but lucky he throws that ball over there, and he's lucky he didn't have his second interception of the game. There's Ted Roof up in the booth back-to-back -back years. When he it's first got here three seasons ago, he was down on the field, and at one point during that game, he decided he was going to go, uh, he sees he went, decided he was going to go up in the booth. They shut out Syracuse, and boy, he's been there ever since. Golden from the 31. And across the 40. Terrell Williams had the stop for Alcorn State. So we'll take a timeout. Georgia Tech will be on offense once again. Just over seven minutes to go from Atlanta, Georgia. In style. <laughs> Check them out. Hey, I like the all-weather briefcase, the uh, plastic bag, too, with all your notes in there. Yeah, don't be hating. The W <laughs> Hotel let me use the bike. There's a lot going on in Atlanta tonight. Oh. We got uh, Vice President Biden is speaking. The Falcons are playing right over there. We got the Yellow Jackets going at it on a Thursday night. James getting the workout. Thomas working out the arm. Deflected and incomplete. Brad Stewart was downfield, number 83. Quentin Cantu. On the defense for Alcorn State. Nice job by Cantu. And they're they're not scared. Paul Johnson, he doesn't love to play true freshman. You go back to even Adrian Peterson, broke NCAA rushing records at Georgia Southern. He didn't start as a true freshman. He was phenomenal. They, but but Brad Stewart, guys like Marcus Marshall, and over on the defense a couple, they're guys that are so talented, they want to try to get him out there early. Yeah, Coach Johnson winning a couple of national titles at Georgia Southern. That's a first down and more for Snotty. A flag has come out, and Snotty tumbles down near the 35. But again, there is a penalty marker. Gatewood on the tackle of Snotty. That's so good to see Snotty out there after the awful break. 
in the leg against Clemson, and he, he looks like he's got some pop. It's also good to see Ike Willis going down block. First foul. Illegal block ball the way. Number 24 defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. So number 24 is Warren Gatewood. Well, let's see if we can find him. There's one guy cut outside. Must have been the flash of purple coming back across there. And you know, a, a lot of times you'll see these smaller defensive backs, and you got a big offensive lineman, even some of these backs pulling and trying to block them outside just to create a little bit of a log jam. Go up and cut them down, trying to chop them down and, and create something that, rather than just giving up all that space. Costly here. Thomas. Snotty. Cuts it to five. Dies for the end zone and scores for the Jackets. Big night in Atlanta here, Tom. Everybody getting involved. We've seen Justin Thomas. Here goes Snotty, even Scove as well. And the fake to him on the dive. Everybody worried about the big pounder inside. And here comes a little bit of speed on the outside. It's the senior from Carrollton, Georgia, Broderick Snotty. And look at his buddies leading the way, doing what a Paul Johnson coached offense does best, getting bodies down on the turf. Now the play is being reviewed. Once again, you need indisputable video evidence. That is the key phrase. Did he come down before that ball crossed the goal line? Great effort by Snotty to get there, James, but did he make it in time? Look at the blocking by June. He, oh, this may... There's definitely a knee down. From that angle, it's not definitive, but it certainly looks like... We probably won't be able to see here. There's a knee down. It's Michael Hearns on the tackle, 47 in purple and gold. If it does stand, it'll be a 21-yard TD run for Broderick Snotty, who had three touchdown rushes a season ago. And that would be a drive of just three plays and 46 seconds for the score, aided by the 15-yard personal foul. See, the problem with changing this call is you don't have that sideline angle 90 degree angle and so while it looks like everybody it, you know I I would put my money on that he wasn't in but you can't say he absolutely wasn't in because of the angle so I think it'll stand but while they work it out did you see Ricky June 20 yards down the field blocking his guy the receiver into the end zone Waller and Smelter last year were great blockers and that's what I was wondering are, are they going to have there's one more look at it yeah I mean, maybe they can say, hey, we can tell right there that he's not in. But. Yeah, it appears that he might have had the D down, but what's the determination as far as where the ball is shy of that goal line? They may be working on that particular aspect. Talked about Waller and Smelter, the two leading receivers from last year. Both have moved on, and now a very high priority put on the blocking skills of the receivers here at Georgia Tech, according to Paul Johnson at our meetings. If you want the ball thrown to you, there's one more look we haven't seen. That's a little bit higher, and again, it's kind of close. But so that the official word from referee Stuart Mullins. So credit Snotty with a 20-yard run. One yard shy of the end zone. Georgia Tech with 47 rushing touchdowns last year. Looks like Tim Byerly has come in, number 18. Tim's a senior from Alpharetta, Georgia. So it's now Byerly in there. On first and goal for the Jackets. Going to try to do it himself to the goal line and no indication. About the Braves. Nice job. Getting low pad level, those guys in purple here. 
Job by the defensive line, firing out and then stepping up in the gap, the linebacker, and holding them up, waiting for your buddies, and that's, and that's a big load in Byerly, and a good job, most importantly, because you're down there low. Scove has done damage the whole first quarter. Everybody thinks it's going to Scove, but they played disciplined football. We played assignment football. There was a guy left for Byerly. So we'll try to get on second down for Georgia Tech. Swing it wide. And the touchdown, Isaiah Willis took the pitch from Byerly. Third rushing touchdown of the game for Georgia Tech. A little A-back love here. Snotty thought he had a touchdown after review. They put it down at the one, the other eye back. Ike Willis, the junior. Former walk-on, earned a scholarship. They love him around here. And he punches it in for the third touchdown here already tonight in the first quarter. First career touchdown for Willis. Five plays and 59 yards. The one-yard TD run from Isaiah Willis. 5'9", 195-pound junior into the end zone for the first time in a Georgia Tech uniform. Back to that last drive. There's there's Snotty cutting it back across the grain, aided by a penalty. Warren Gatewood, a low chop block, and still impressed with those receivers blocking outside. You had Ike Willis on that block, and you had June on that block. And then the payoff at the end. Snotty had three carries for 51 yards on that drive, but it was the other eight back, and Isaiah Willis. He punched it in. 20 to nothing, Georgia Tech. Well, the opening night of college football for 2015. Jackets went 11 and 3 last year, 6 and 2 in the conference play, winning the Coastal Division. They were 5 and 1 here at Bobby Dodd Stadium, the oldest on campus facility in the nation. A return. Let's go down to the sidelines and Jen Hildreth. Well, you guys might notice I have on a little more bling than normal right about now. The guys over there at Alcorn State were nice enough to dig one of these up. This is the ring from not only their SWAC championship, but their historically back college national championship. And when we asked Jay Hobson about it, or it might have been their defensive coordinator, he said, we're not going to have any of those things around anywhere. That was last year. They need to come in this year hungry. Coach Hobson said, this game's going to test our medal. Let us see where we're at. That medal surely getting tested so far here in Atlanta. Oh, come on, Coach Hobson. Let them wear it a little bit. <laughs> you, hey, you know, if they really aren't supposed to wear it around, they sit back in the room. It's almost like, like God, precious. Precious <laughs> like Lord of the Rings, Jen. First title since 94 in the SWAC for Alcorn State. This pass is complete. So John Gibbs, Jr., it's Lamarvin Ashley on that play. Well, to start deep in your own territory, you have to have first downs like you see right here. And like you saw last time, Alcorn State was out there on the field offensively. Look at this. You pick up six yards on first down. Boy, does that open up the offensive playbook for you on the next couple downs and make everything more manageable. Remember the first drive, they went backwards with the penalty five yards back. You can't help out this hungry Georgia Tech defense already with its ears pinned back. Gibbs gave it off. Tyler McCordes makes the tackle of Darian Ragsdale. And now third down for the Braves, who are over two so far in the game on third down with 424 to go and the clock ticking. Here's, here's what you need from Ragsdale, the senior, the big pounder right there in that situation. Put your foot in the dirt and get me one yard. Get me two. We can't afford to go backwards. We can't afford a loss. 
And now you're looking at a third down and medium. Very tough situation. Know where those sticks are. Last year, the Braves were the best in the swack on third down. Looking for a conversion here, and they will not get it as Gibbs tried to dump it off incomplete. And the Braves will have to punt. Ashley was out there, but they could not collaborate. And Coach Hobson's team has to punt on fourth and five. What a nice pickup on first down. Here on third down, you know, you'd like to think John Gibbs, everybody has talked about what a great runner he is. In that situation, you've got one guy in all kinds of space. Do you have some wiggle in open field? Let's see it and just dive forward and get us a first down. Fresh set of downs. Instead, they punt again. Craney to punt. Golden deep signals for the fair catch at the 31 and makes it successfully. At the 31 yard line. So Georgia Tech will start first and 10 from the 31 after the 39 yard punt from McCraney. And the Jackets so far in the game have kept it on the ground and effectively so. And why not? They were the best in all of the football bowl subdivision. So far 136 yards rushing for Georgia Tech and three touchdowns. One of those belongs to Justin Thomas. Who just got to the pylon for his score the first quarter? What a great young man. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday. Very humble, but very confident in his abilities. He says it looks like there's a lot going on, but it slows down for him. Let's see what he does here. Finds his man at the 45 and up to midfield. And more. Thomas delivered the bullet. Taquan Marshall makes the catch at 24 yards and a first down. How'd you like to be one of these? Backs for all four state. All you've had all night long, Tom, are these receivers blowing off the line and then cutting you and blocking you and pounding you, pounding you. Then you try to give a little bit of cushion. You're tired of getting beat up by these guys, and they break it off and they run a route on you, and you're wide open, moving those sticks. You say it slows down for him. It just makes me sick to my stomach as a former linebacker <laughs> and son of a defensive coordinator. Oh, my goodness, his offense is clicking right now. Wants to throw it again. This one complete at the 35 to Searcy. There is a penalty marker back at midfield. There's also one at the 36-yard line of the Braves. So there's a couple of markers on the field. Stuart Mullins in the consult and his refereeing crew. Again, can't help him out. Jay Hobson knows it. This big Dion McNair. Gainesville, Florida kid from Eastside High School. There's here's the face mask. It, it's first and ten. He didn't go with that one, but obvious from can two. And then here's the late hit from Big 99, Dion McNair, who they're expecting a big year from. Missed all of last year with a hurt ankle. And the seniors got to be smarter than that. He took a couple steps after the ball was thrown. And he's trying to move something. Instead, they move way forward offensively for Georgia Tech. Thomas, end zone. It's a touchdown. Michael Summers holds it in. 19 yards for Georgia Tech. that quick trigger the release of Justin Thomas talk about a dual threat nice protection look at him fire and look at the window there almost is no window Anthony Williams right over his fingertips oh, look at him and his buddy Scove is fired up man oh it's good to have Michael Summers healthy and back out there missed a little bit of training camp late they weren't sure if they'd get him but he did start tonight and now they do it through the air Summers did not have a TD grab last season, appearing in 14 games, but this time he hauls in the TD. Well, a couple things. The, the fine points. He's always had a quick release. You, you get a wide open window inside for him. That's one thing. In that pocket, Justin Thomas, if he has one fallback, he's shorter. So sometimes he can't throw over those big bodies. But he's got plenty of room there, cleared out by his offensive line, and great hands by Summers. All pass plays 
on that drive as we transition into the ACC stories and headlines for 2015. Will Florida State repeat Who was that ACC guy? champs? How about Georgia Tech? Can they take down the Coastal one more time and return to the championship game for the third time in four years? And who is the best QB? We got a bunch of them in the ACC, Mr. Bates, including <laughs> number five. I, I think number five, everybody in this house right now, is thinking that it's this dude, Justin Thomas. But boy, do we have some good ones. The sophomore, Deshaun Watson's got to stay healthy. Brad Kaya's got some great receivers. That backfield behind him will be questionable. And Mr. Williams over there playing for Larry Fedora. Last I checked, they were up on rival South Carolina. Don't forget Jacoby Brissett. Boy, they're glad to have him back in Raleigh. Man, is this a fun time of year. College football's back, and we get a taste of it early on a Thursday night. North Carolina does have the lead over South Carolina. That's now in the third, 13-10. That game being played up the road in Charlotte, North Carolina. So Alcorn State, their drives have started from the 25 three times. The 18 once with 2.39 to go in the first. 27 nothing Georgia Tech. And remember, you know, if there was a chance some people thought that you'd throw up a graphic of a bunch of great quarterbacks that well, Justin Thomas would never be in there. Not because he's not a good quarterback, but because Nick Saban wanted him to come play defensive back at Alabama. He's an Alabama kid from Prattville, Alabama. But he wanted to play quarterback, and he wanted to play it here in Atlanta for Paul Johnson. And this offense, and boy, what a good fit it is so far. Thomas threw for over 1,700 yards last season. 69 yards on that previous drive, and Gibbs on the pass incomplete. He is clearly out of his rhythm. You're looking at the player of the year in the swag from a season ago. The MVP of that championship game against Southern. He's out of sorts right now. Absolutely. That's a good point. You know, and, and a four-year starter. There's nothing new to him playing this game of football. And it's nothing new playing competition like this. I mean, Southern missed last year. You watch that game. They turn it over late in the first half. Or it could have been even a lot closer. Gives one of six, and oh look, coaching them up. Wow, that's it. I mean, it just keeps on getting better if you're a Georgia Tech fan. This ball is incomplete, but going back to Justin Thomas, seeing him over there, I mean, that's that's as good as it gets coaching guys up because he is a quiet guy, and he's always led by example. As a sophomore, he was voted captain last year. You don't get that very often, and it was it was almost unanimous. Now he doesn't have those veteran backs. He doesn't have those veteran receivers with him anymore. He's got to become a coach and not just a, a quiet leader by example. And you see him on the dry erase board. That's 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 a, a fun sideline right now, led by number five. Thomas had three rushing touchdowns and a passing TD in the Orange Bowl victory against Mississippi State. Full stop. Full stop. Number eight, 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 eight. Let's slide it on down to Jen. We well, guys showed Justin Thomas talking to some of his teammates out there, maybe working on the dry erase board. What he told me about this year with what you just talked about, James, that he doesn't have those guys around him last year at the skill positions that he knew he could bail out and hand off to. He said, I was really prepared last year, but I knew I had to be even more prepared, make sure that everybody, before I break that huddle and before they go out in the field, apparently, know exactly what they need to do. So he's kind of taken that leadership to a whole new level this season. That pass by Gibbs broken up. And it was Chris Milton making the play for the Yellow Jackets. Tom, again, Ted Brooks defense, Joe Speed is the secondary coach. They're well coached. Chris Milton had an interception earlier by sitting on those sticks, sitting on that line that Alcorn State, John Gibbs needed to get a first down. Watching those eyes. Where do they want to go? They don't want to go five yards in front of it. Sit right there. Watch those eyes. Make a break. It's a well-coached team, and it's a fun team, and they enjoy playing for that man. Ted Roof up in the booth right now. That's another stop and turnover on down. Roof in his third year as defensive coordinator. This will be Golden. Back pedals at the 34. Fancy footwork. Midfield. Golden steps out at the 31. 
And he's looking for the oxygen. <laughs> he is. He ran a lot further to get out of the way of some potential tacklers. Watch his buddies not give up, too. Teammates continuing to block. And, you know, that's really an unselfish player to go out there. These guys, guys like Chase Alford, who's not starting at linebacker tonight because they start with a nickel package, but on every single special team. These starters that want to be on special teams, they just want to contribute and help this team win. Thomas going to scramble all the way back close to midfield. And that's Deion McNair. That's the first thing all night that the Braves can celebrate. A loss of 19 yards. It's a good job, the pressure. And, you know, Michael Brooks first lost contain. How about the 305-pound McNair making up for that late hit that cost him 15 yards earlier, taking him way back now. Transferred from Mississippi Delta Community College, played his high school ball back in Gainesville, Florida. For the east side Rams, and man, he looked quick running him down. Up the middle, breaking through. Marcus Marshall to the end zone. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. 49 yards for Marshall. Marcus Marshall goes up the middle for 49 yards, and the Georgia Tech touchdown. One big play for the defense, but you got to be consistent and no pressure there from 99. A great hole up front by that offensive line. And guess what? Another true freshman. You might have heard of big brother Keith up there for the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, Marcus is special. Boy, are they excited to have him in Atlanta. Set a high school rushing record back at Millbrooks High School with 2,198 yards and 31 touchdowns. And another reason why Paul Johnson just might have a few true freshmen out there in 2015. I think it was Freddie Burden, the center, who just blew off the ball and got under Deion McNair, who probably was gassed after running down Justin Thomas on the last play, but you need some consistency. You can't make a great big play and then get blown off. You gotta maintain your leverage and your position. Great job at the next level as well. That offensive line, remember they had four starters returning. Shamir Devine has really had an outstanding first start here tonight. He's the only new starter up there, and they've looked really good, and the score shows just that at 34 to nothing still in the first quarter. Yeah, James, that's a good point. You get Brian Chamberlain and Trey Braun. Both of those guys making their 22nd starts in Georgia Tech uniforms. Burden and Braun started every game last year. Cohesion up front for the Jackets, and it has resulted in 34 points so far. The fourth rushing touchdown of the game, and it comes from Marcus Marshall, the freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina, going 49 yards. That one will stay in the end zone for Alcorn State. This is only the second SWAC opponent that Georgia Tech has ever faced. Back in 2013, they beat Alabama A&M 66-7. And the first Thursday night opener since 2011 when they beat Western Carolina, that's the alma mater of Paul Johnson. Well, it wasn't it for a time there. It seemed like every time you turned on a Thursday night game, it featured the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They feel right at home on a Thursday night. The score shows it. And Tom, last year, I actually had their opener against an FCS Wofford team, and it was completely different. Wofford gave this Georgia Tech team everything they wanted, and then some. It was a close game to the very end. They've come out ready to play here. Nighttime is the right time, I guess, this year. 38 to 19 was that final last year against the Wofford Terriers, a consistent performer out of the Southern Conference. Demond Smith making the tackle of John Gibbs Jr. He is a junior out of Houston, Texas. Just two yards on that play. For inside of a minute to play in the first quarter, it has been all Yellow Jackets.
work it to the near side and rocked out of bounds as Darian Ragsdale absorbs some contact, but then Smith was the first one to hit him. Davis finished him off and got him out of bounds. Better job, Isaac Sampson. The guy that they think has a chance at the next level, the left guard up there, big 79. What a good job of setting the edge and again getting some positive yardage again. You've got a third down and short. I guarantee you that defensive secondary for Georgia Tech knows that 35 yard line is the line to get. It looks like they're heating it up walking up in the blitz and now they'll walk out. Yeah they can wait if they want to. Just a second left on the game clock. Which was ahead of the play clock so we'll wait on this third down play. The first quarter. Gibbs, Baker, and Ragsdale all rushed for over 650 yards last season. But in this first quarter, it's a rushing attack of the Yellow Jackets on top of the Braves. 34 to nothing. Milton, the interception. He'll turn it into points. Summers with a touchdown grab. What a quarter for the Jackets. Sky View Atlanta in the background on a perfect night for college football the quick and loans game summary it's all Georgia Tech James 221 total yards 35 nothing zero first downs for the guys in purple here's a chance to start the second quarter differently and now they're going to be 0 for 5 on third down well and, and that was their best opportunity Gibbs had a guy Jordan Payne, his top receiver out there, setting all alone, but he just, you said it, Tom, he's just, he hasn't gotten into a rhythm. He's pressing, and he's just trying to make too much happen. That's, that is a, that's a little toss that you do warming up, and you, you can see by the young man's expression on his face, he's frustrated with himself. Yeah, couldn't hit his leading receiver from a year ago in Payne, and now it is golden. Now the 29, and he makes the fair catch. Jack is pouring it on in the first 15 minutes, and Thomas gets it started, getting to the pylon. And sharing the love. Hey, who's the new guy? That's Mr. <laughs> Scope into the end zone, fifth time in his career, first time Georgia Tech. How about the hands of big Michael Summers, first career touchdown? And speaking of first career touchdown, well, no other chances for young Marcus Marshall, the true freshman from 49 yards out. And it's 34 to nothing. It's not 35 to nothing, so at least you have something to go back and work on and get better at that <laughs> extra point that they flow. You see that Tim Byerly, number 18, has come in. Broderick Snoddy, the leading rusher thus far, 51 yards. And that'll be Scove. Patrick Scove Always seems to fall forward. Scove. He's in the MBA program here at Georgia Tech after getting his degree at Stanford. He's got seven carries, 26 yards, and a touchdown so far, James. 14, I think, was the official number at Stanford. Well, he keeps he keeps getting three, four yards, five yards a pop right up the middle. We get a whole lot more. Byerly immediately here. Yeah, there's Byerly trying to do it himself. Runs into Watkins. So Byerly is a senior seeing some action here after that explosive first 15 minutes by Georgia Tech. The only thing they didn't do right was an extra point. Otherwise, almost perfect. This is the first third down situation of the game for the Yellow Jackets. Uh-oh, Byerly. Let's start it off on the right foot here now. This is a team that 57.9, the highest mark on record since 2005. That's when they started putting those stats down to the highest in a long long time on third downs here's a very makeable third down Byerly who completed nine passes last year is going to run showing some punishment and across midfield Watkins on the tackle Byerly with 14 yards on the rush just put the shoulder down new offensive lineman in there as well and they're doing a great job helping him out Good job there by the center of getting down the field. Andrew Marshall helping him out. You know, Byerly's an interesting story from Alpharetta, Georgia, right up the road, Chattahoochee High School, where he won the state championship, the state player of the year, went to MTSU, but came back here and walked on, came back home. 
That pass complete. Ricky June still upright and finally wrestled to the turf inside the 30 for June. And as I told you, Byerly was 9 of 13 through the air last year, 69%. Sticky Ricky June getting some stats. No real stats to speak of last year. He got some action late in games and played some special teams. But he looks good. That, that big question coming in. Can you replace Waller? Can you replace Smelter? Michael Summers, Ricky June have looked good so far. They're really high on the true freshman, Brad Stewart. That play went for 23 yards. This will be much less and down close to the 20, but it's Skull again. Time for our Hardy's star to watch, and fittingly enough, it is number seven, Patrick Scove, the graduate student. I got to admit, Tom, they asked me who I wanted, and all I needed to know was the name Scove. I called a couple of his brothers' games out at Stanford, and I loved watching his brother Shane play linebacker so much. I hadn't seen him yet throughout camp. We didn't get to see practice. <laughs> all I needed was the last name, and he hasn't disappointed. Saw that he's gone for 32 yards so far in the game, and he's got touchdown number two. Seven right up the gut for 21 yards. Carry number nine. Results in touchdown number two. That's half of the touchdown total that he had while at Stanford. What a nice guy to show up on your doorstep when your backfield is completely depleted. You lose your top four running backs from last year. You have a guy in C.J. Leggett who you were counting on redshirted last year, Tom, but he got injured. You don't have any more. Knocking on your door, the graduate transfer from Guadalajara, Mexico. Muy bueno, College football is brought to you by the official corporate champions of the ACC, Geico, Toyota, and New York Life. All those trophies over this great history of college football at Georgia Tech as they start the 123rd season here in Atlanta. They've won over 700 games all time. And it's their 32nd year in the ACC. They joined back in 1983. With the school joining the conference in 1979. Warford is deep in the end zone. He'll watch it sail over him as we go down to the sidelines in Jen. Well, I don't think anybody would argue it's been a rather a rough start for John Gibbs and the Alcorn State offense. Had trouble really getting anything going. But wanted to give you guys a little perspective. and might not know much about this program. Talking to Gibbs this week, he told me about why he stayed. Because when he came in as a freshman, he didn't have a head coach. That's when the coaching change happened. Hobson came in late that year. Didn't really get to work with the guys at all. And some of the situations they were dealing with, they said they were at rock bottom. Gibbs told me when the jerseys ripped in practice, they couldn't replace him. They didn't have enough shoulder pads. He told me they only got one pair of cleats all season. In mid-season in practice, he literally ran out of his cleat. The bottom fell off. They stuck through that. They got to a SWAC championship last year, trying to keep building this season. Jeff, thank you. Warford has the football for Alcorn State. Jay Hobson in his fourth year. He's 23 and 13 overall. They won nine games back in 2013. And that was the first nine win season, James, since 1974. He's the first white head coach in the SWAC. Well, he grew up in Vicksburg, about 45 minutes to the north, and really a, a homecoming and a happy one for Alcorn State fans. And how about this? We got a, our first first down here for his offense. Is they look pretty good slinging the ball around here on this drive? And look at the hurry up. A little bit of a rhythm. And unfortunately, Marquise Warford is slow to get up. Officials time out for an injured player. Warford did make the grab. Producing the first first down of the game for Alcorn State. And that's the John Gibbs that Brave fans are used to throwing that ball on the mark. He 
58.3 completion percentage. Didn't look like it in the early goings of this game. Couple back to back catches and some positive yardage. Up the middle and more positive yardage. That'll be Ragsdale, and he's into Georgia Tech territory. You know, Lance Austin making the stop. Sorry, Tom. Just to finish up on Jen's story with Coach Hobson, he got there. He was hired in June. So that means no spring ball. There's a big play to turn it the other way by Georgia Tech. No spring ball, and a lot of guys That's left. Jen mentioned, hey, John Gibbs decided to stay. Well, that wasn't the case for most of the star players. Ten of the top ten guys were out of there. So it was it was truly starting from even a worse position than, than you'd think a new guy taking over. What a turnaround it's been. The team was 2-8 and eight the year before. Hobson took over the program. Pro on the run by Gibbs is incomplete. And Vessel was the intended receiver. Lawrence Austin, who had that big stick on Warford, had the coverage. Cameraman Jeff Barley, hope he's got his cup on down there, Tom. Man, that ball's coming in fast. <laughs> All right, so a third down and ten. You've had some positive things going your way, all Corn State. Can you move the chains one more time? 0 for 5 on third down in the game. Gibbs dumps it off. Ragsdale lost the football at the 42. Who's got it? Kashun Freeman for Georgia Tech on the strip. And they've got to unravel this pile. There's Austin. He says the Jackets have it, and the officials agree. A.J. Gray was on the cover for Georgia Tech. Second turnover of the game for the Braves. A.J. Gray, another true freshman making a play here tonight on opening night. Gray, an All-American 2014 Gatorade Player of the Year. Good job not getting cut a couple linebackers here. And how about the hustle? Freeman, last year's freshman All-American, the defensive end, turning and chasing down the ball carrier and just raking through and ripping it away. Boy, turnovers, two for the Braves. Remember the key, take it away from Tech, not give it back to Georgia Tech. To the 45 goes Marcus Allen, number 24, the junior from Hilliard, Florida. Marcus Allen. Chris Milton had an interception in the first quarter. Now the recovery by Gray. And see if they can turn that into points. 14 yards on the rush. Wow. 33 there, the middle linebacker just catching blocks up front. That's Damon Watkins, who's a heck of a backer. But these guys are off the spot so fast and on him, eating him up. That time it was Trey Clark to clear the way. Byerly pitches. Marshall goes out of bounds. Take Taekwon Marshall. Nine different players have rushed the football. Well, not only a new quarterback in there, nothing wrong with Justin Thomas, just getting some meaningful reps. Not only for a new quarterback, but a whole new offensive line as well. Sands Shamir Devine, who, well, he might as well be new because he's making his first start here tonight. 18 yards of the previous play. Yellow Jackets try some misdirection, minimal gain. Deion McNair is there for the stop. Marcus Allen, 24 in the carry. Now, Shamir Devine is, is getting some good reps. <laughs> I've been impressed. He he really has stood out to me. Watch him. He's the big body pulling. 365 pounds coming at you. How would you like to be a defensive end? Hey, nobody's on me. And here comes 365 pounds just barreling down on you. Boy, this is going to be a, a fun year for the right guard if he continues to play like he is here early tonight. Similar play. Allen again with his third carry of the game. He's up close to 20 yards so far. Third and three for Georgia Tech. Only had one third down situation so far. They converted that. 
Georgia Tech was 58% on third down last year. That was the best in the nation, and Byerly's got it. Brooks Jr. made the tackle, but Tim Byerly proving very capable coming in for Justin Thomas, who had a big first quarter. And there is a timeout of the field. Big offensive line can't make out the number just yet. So we'll step aside for a moment from Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Through his own power, though slowly and cautiously. But a good sign to see Allen up and moving about on that Georgia Tech sideline and being attended to by the medical and training staff for the Jackets. Once again, driving that football. Marcus Marshall is number 34. Marcus Allen was having a great series. He rushed the ball three times for 21 yards, including a 14-yard run, but again shaken up and out of the game now. And there's Marshall, the freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina. It'll be second and five from the eight, so they can get a first down at the three. Georgia Tech, the number 16 team in the country in the preseason top 25 for the first time since 2010. Trying to get to the house one more time. And how about the diving effort from Tim Byerly? Hey, Byerly two for two on third down conversions here he with the keeper everybody in a purple jersey after the dive sucks them all in puts it back in his own belly and dives across nothing new getting in the paint for Byerly scored seven touchdowns in 2014. The extra point makes it 48 to nothing. Byerly to the end zone for the Jackets way out in front of the second. Forty-eight to nothing, Georgia Tech on top of Alcorn State out of the swack of the defending champs from that league. But so far tonight, no match for Justin Thomas and the Yellow Jackets, who have utilized many different players in their offensive attack. They've been pretty good on defense, too, producing two turnovers. And the Braves will bring this one out. It'll be Warford up close to the 20. Hey, football fans, we're giving away a Honda generator each week for five weeks during college football season. Get down on the action and go to foxsports.com slash south slash Honda for a chance to win a Honda generator to power your next tailgate. Well, the Jackets don't need a generator tonight. They've got all the energy and power they need, and they have put it on display so far in the first half especially offensively. Had a chance to walk around campus a little bit yesterday and today, James, and everybody was so excited to start the season on a Thursday night against a team that we thought might present a bit of a challenge, but so far, Georgia Tech equal to the task. Saw our first hoverboard, didn't we? We did the, uh, and like a unicycle. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is Georgia Tech after That's all. Right. Doing great things in the classroom and also on the football field to get 2015 started as Gibbs reaches forward. Francis Callen, number 92, on the stop for Georgia Tech. We talked a lot about Gotsis being new to football from Australia, but Francis Callen, even newer to the sport, just played one year in high school, grew up in England. It's going to be Aaron Baker, number 36. And Callum again gets his nose in on the tackle. Now we approach the five and a half minute mark to go in the second quarter. So far, it's been all Ragsdale for all foreign state, but Aaron Baker, while just a sophomore, he and Ragsdale together combined for 24 touchdowns in that SWAC championship season a year ago behind John Gibbs. So Baker, the horse 5'10, 241 pounder out of Bell Glades, Florida. 
Yeah, he led him in rushing touchdowns with 13 a season ago. This one's going to be stopped stone cold as Baker ran into P.J. Davis. He of 119 tackles last year, the best on the Jacket defensive roster. I love to watch him blitz. You see if they tried to block him. You know, so many guys, it, you feel like you got to get a piece. Hey, if you can slip by a blocker, you can slip them and maintain your gap control. Go where you've got to go, then do it. And he's a natural at that. P.J. Davis is a great blitzer. He does a lot of damage behind the line of scrimmage and moving them backwards on that play. Gibbs. Just beyond the 30. Callen again. Number 92. He's called his name several times thus far, making the most of his entry into the game this evening. That'll bring up third down. This is really big here for Alcorn State. They need to move these chains. Need a little bit more clock off here. They they don't want Georgia Tech to score one more time. Get a little bit of feel good for Jay Hobson's team going into that halftime locker room. Gonna have to step up and elude the pressure. That is incomplete. Trying to hit his man Aaron Baker on the run. So fourth down for the Braves who James hope to end their season. Here in Atlanta, this season the SWAC champs and the MEAC champs will meet in the Celebration Bowl in December. It will be played at the Georgia Dome. So beyond tonight, as they try to gain important experience and get their footing for the season, but they want to be playing at the Georgia Dome come December. Yeah, how about that? So the SWAC champion, they've never played in that FCS, the, the playoffs or the championship, but that's new for the MEAC, right? This year, I believe, is they've... They'll join forces. That's interesting how they'll do that. This punt is going to continue to roll and down toward the 15. So we'll take a timeout. Georgia Tech back on offense. 3.34 to go with a second from Atlanta, Georgia. The start of college football. Atlanta, Georgia. That picturesque skyline and the activity. So much going on in this city. Included in that, the start of college football on a Thursday night. So happy to be part of it alongside James Bates, Tom Wormy, Jen Hildreth is on the sidelines and our outstanding production crew also in attendance here at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Rich in tradition and history. And this team trying to add to it this year in 2015. Marcus Marshall all the way out past the 35. All Corn State say... They've got the ball. This is just what they needed. Officials agree. And there's Marcus Allen headed to the dressing room. And Jen has more on Marcus Allen. Yeah, he will not be returning in this game, guys. He did have some ice on his right ankle. Could just be precautionary considering the score at this time, but just wanted to give you that update. He's headed back to the locker room. Will not be back out on the field tonight. Jen, thank you. Georgia Tech has turned it over. Here's the injury. And it was Byerly on the rush, but there's Allen who got his legs tangled up. I hate to see that for the former linebacker. Two years as a linebacker here at Georgia Tech before moving over. They were high on him, also high on Marcus Marshall, but the young man's got to hold on to the rock. Can't turn it over. This is one of the keys we had for all four State. They've got to steal a few. Can they do anything with it? That ball's on the turf, too. Georgia Tech last year fumbled it 20 times and lost 12 of them. They've lost one in this game. Antonio Simmons with the shot to jar the ball loose from Gibbs. But he was able to fall on it. They'll lose five, and the ball spotted at the 41. When he talked about a little bit of momentum, a little bit of feel good going into that locker room. And again, you've got to get positive yardage. You've got to get positive plays on first down, on second down, and not put yourself backwards. And now it's second down and 15. It's a tough, tough defense. They'll swing it back the other way. This is George. He's got a first down and more. And inside the 20. To let George on the pass from John Gibbs Jr. Forced out by Dominique Noble. 21 yards on the connection. 
finally get to call Tonka's name. Like a Tonka truck, this tough receiver. And a nice play here for Gibbs. It's nice because we've seen him force so many. This is a little rhythm play, a little touch pass to the senior George. And now the Braves here with two minutes left before halftime with a chance to put some points on the board. On the cusp of the red zone. On the edge, foiled McKenzie is the receiver. Lynn Griffin is number 27. He's a junior from Jacksonville, Florida. A lot of Jacksonville kids here in Atlanta about, oh, what would you say, about four and some change away. Not too bad of a drive. Good players down there. And you know what? You got to give more. Brandon Vessels, a senior wide receiver. You've got to put forth an effort. Just put on the tape of the Georgia Tech wide receivers blocking. That's the way you got to go after it every time if you want to block and win games. This will be complete to Ragsdale. Shakes his man down by the 20. Gets pass complete. Jabari Hunt on the tackle, number 32. Third down with 105 and counting. They have not converted a third down tonight, 0 for 7. This is a team, James, that was first in the SWAC last year, averaging close to 500 yards of offense. They've been limited to just 78 so far in the first half. It'll be short of the marker, in fact, well short. Orlando Fields on the catch. 85 for head coach Jay Hobson. Quite a resume for Hobson. Been an assistant at Ole Miss. Marshall when they won the FCS championship back in 96. Delta State, Florida. LSU, Tulane. Defensive coordinator at Memphis. I mean, the list goes up. Linebacker coach at Michigan. Defensive coordinator at Southern Miss. They went to three bowl games. This is a guy with a lot of experience on that sideline. Well, he was way back when. He was a GA when, when I was a player in Florida on Steve Spurrier's staff. Coach Hobson has decided to take a timeout. Really, in the grand scheme of things, probably an important series for Alcorn State. Trying to get something on the board before they have to go to the locker room and reevaluate. Well, Little victories, little little baby steps towards momentum, and it's you know it's been a tough night so far for John Gibbs and company. But you want to go in with a little bit of feel good into the locker room, and you never ever you always want to win, of course, but you never ever want to get shut out somewhere. So this is a this is a big kick. No matter what happens in the second half here, now at least you know you get that goose egg off the board, and it'll be up to Hayden McCraney. This will be a 35-yard attempt for McCraney, who was 8 of 12 last year. And also made one from 47 yards for his longest. It is no good. On the final play of the first half. Your halftime score, Georgia Tech 28, all point state zero. The Jackets using all kinds of different players to produce this 48 to nothing halftime result. Coach Hobson's team will go to the locker room missing that last second field goal in the first half of the Yellow Jackets have to feel pretty good about what they were able to accomplish in the first half. And let's go down to Jen. Thanks, guys. Well, Coach, I have to think that's about as good a start as you could hope for tonight, right? Well, we played pretty well, other than the turnover there at the end and uh, maybe a couple mistakes on special teams. You told me you were looking forward to seeing this team find its identity a little bit. Did you figure anything out there? Well, we're playing pretty good. We'll see if we can continue when we start subbing even more in the second half. Is that about what we can expect second half? I think so. Okay, thanks, Coach. Guys, back to you. Jen, thank you. 371 total yards, 294 on the ground, 48 to nothing, Georgia Tech. Halftime straight ahead from Atlanta. That's life. That's football. Sometimes adversity strikes, so we'll see how we battle back in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Jen, thank you. Time to take a look at the FanDuel huddle up. Second half adjustments. Well, Tom, just like Coach Hobson told Jen, 
Find some rhythm as a team. Find some rhythm as an offense. Hey, next weekend, you've got SWAC play. Alabama State on the schedule. You've got to take some good things out of this and not be completely demoralized when you leave town. For Georgia Tech, there wasn't a whole lot of bad in the first half. Keep doing what you're doing. But young guys, we saw Marcus Marshall with the fumble there late in the first half. There are going to be some more young guys that get opportunities. Take care of that football. You hate to see a guy 49-yard touchdown run and then put the ball down on the ground. There are too many good backs back there. If you want to play, you got to take care of that rock and best believe it was preached at halftime. The 48 points, just four shy of the all-time record here at Georgia Tech for the first half. They scored 52 against Alabama A&M back in 2013. Big first half, both sides of the ball. P.J. Davis, Tom, and this Georgia Tech defense coached by Ted Roof. Well, they've come in hard-charging and hungry for some Alcorn State offensive blood. John Gibbs, Jr., the senior quarterback, four-year starter last year, SWAC Offensive Player of the Year, was not able to find any kind of a rhythm at all in the first half. Here's a guy who rushed for over 1,000 yards, leading the team last year, 58.3 completion percentage but just never, ever could get in any kind of a rhythm because of this defense in his face all night. 8 of 18 passing and an interception for Gibbs. This time he'll hand it off, and it's Darian Ragsdale. Ragsdale carried seven times in the first half for 20 yards. Dominique Noble makes the tackle. 13 yards on that run. Well, and, and that's that's the rhythm. That certainly helps coming out first play out the gate. You come out and you show some pride and some pop. And it's a Georgia Tech team. They better be ready to answer the pop. Jay Hobson getting on his guys and lighting a fire in the locker room at halftime. Just 31 rushing yards in the first half. Hobbs wants the throw, but it's a short hop at midfield looking for Brandon Vessel, the junior from Baton Rouge. I don't want to beat up on the senior, but this isn't him. This, There is no way that this is the four-year starter that Coach Hobson is used to seeing out there. And Fred Kais, I know he's new to this team, but he was the offensive coordinator at Alabama State and watched this offense click from afar last year. He is all out of sorts. And he, as much as anybody, needs to find some rhythm here in this second half and take it into Alabama State next weekend. They travel to Alabama State next weekend. They beat them last year on October 2nd, 33-7, on their way to the SWAC championship game. Willie Simmons, offensive coordinator for Hobson in these Braves last year, he went and took the head job at Prairie View A&M. That's why Fred Kais is the new offensive coordinator who was leading the offensive charge for Alabama State last season. So a third down now and 11 to go for the offense. Coming out of the pocket, cross midfield. Gibbs with those long strides inside the 35 before A.J. Gray catches him. We talked to Golden and White in that secondary for Georgia Tech yesterday. They said his stride, he takes about three steps, and he's gone several yards in those quick moves by Gibbs. 30 yards on the rush. You get guys in man coverage with their backs turned, and they don't know what's going on behind them. Rush lanes are very important. Here we go again. Going to be Ragsdale. And that's back-to-back -back big chunks for the Braves. Well, and it's good to see for this Alcorn State team. Just hammered in the first half, not folding up the tent and ready to head back home. They're still fighting hard. 16 yards on that play, first down. Just outside the 17 of Georgia Tech. This is a look towards the goal line. There is a flag on the play. The indication is touchdown. That was Jordan Payne on the catch, but again, there is a flag down. So it was Gibbs finding Jordan Payne. Now he had five touchdown grabs on the season last year to lead the team, but let's get the word. Number 12, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Well, what a beautiful throw and catch that's negated with that flag. 
couple guys trying to get on the same page and Tonka George and Brandon Vessel. But instead of six points in the first points of this game for Alcorn State, you're backing it up just when it looks like things are clicking a little bit. And the real John Gibbs out there firing that football around. So Gibbs will work from the shotgun. First and 15 after the penalty. Twelve and a half minutes to go in the third. Warford cuts it back. Dives for the 10-yard line and gets a lot back and more from that penalty. 12 yards on the play. Warford on the run. Corey Griffin is in there, number 14 for Georgia Tech. Paul Johnson told Jen before halftime, let's see how some of these young guys play when they get a chance to get in there. Well, on this opening drive defensively, Tom, they, they've let down a little bit. They've gotten out of their rush lanes. They've overrun the football. They're, they're too excited. You expect that at the beginning of the game from a lot of these guys on opening night. Sure, they're excited to get out there and play some of their first meaningful action, but you've got to play within the scheme. You can't give up those big hitters time and time again. Second and three from the 10. Time for Gibbs to the corner of the end zone and incomplete to let George was in the front corner. Just a little too tall for number five, the senior from New Orleans, Louisiana. When Gibbs has pressed, he's thrown the ball too hard. He's, he, he does throw a nice touch ball, but we haven't seen it quite enough tonight. We've seen several times where he's tried to dump it off to a back coming out of the backfield just a little bit too hard. That one's similar, a little bit of touch, and that's an easy touchdown for Tonka George. Instead, it's third down and three. Looks like Gibbs has come up just a little bit short of the marker. Lynn Griffin, there he is, 27. Junior from Jacksonville, Florida. And on fourth down, it appears that the Braves are going to go. One yard to go. I like it. What does a field goal do? Well, it gets the zero off, but shoot, you just had an ugly-looking field goal attempt. Keep those big guys in there and see if you can get a fresh set of downs and try to score a touchdown here. Looks like Georgia Tech was trying to get a timeout. Instead, the Braves get a first down. Aaron Baker. And Lynn Griffin may have prevented a touchdown. There's too many missed tackles, too many guys just running around willy-nilly on that defense right now. The exact opposite of what we saw throughout the entire first half. With a lot of these second and third stringers in here right now. Fresh set of downs, knocking at the door. Tenth play of the drive. Produces points. Baker takes it in for the first score of the game for Alcorn State. So they got it on fourth down, and then they punch it in. Aaron Baker, redshirt freshman. He's got his first TD in a Braves uni. Well, and he does it right here in Atlanta, Georgia. For a sophomore going behind that big right side of the offensive line, Jeffrey Reno 911 and Totoa. Leah Lua. Craney. That's intercepted by Gray. Who could have run that back for points. That it's uh, McCraney who made the tackle. So the Braves and Aaron Baker, they can celebrate. They're on the board at Bobby Dodd Stadium. College football is brought to you by the official corporate champions of the ACC. Low Jangles, Havilland, and Food Lion. So much activity in the great city of Atlanta, Georgia, welcoming all Corn State to take on the Yellow Jackets in the home opener, the season opener for the first day of the college football season for 2015. The Braves just got their first TD of the game thanks to Aaron Baker from a yard out. Took the second half kickoff all the way to the end zone. Golden. 
Cut down to the 18 by Darian Anderson. That's a 15-yard return. As we get a look at our Dairy Queen fan cam here at Bobby Dodd Stadium. And look who we found. This, these two young ladies are right here. This lady is Vicki Durham. And her mother, Wes Durham's mother-in-law, Nancy, our DQ fan cam. You know, at least at least some of the Durham's aren't playing hooky. West Durham <laughs> had to go across the street and call the Atlanta Falcons last preseason game tonight. But you know, fan cam or not, Vicky's one of the biggest Tech fans around. This is Marshall dragged down in Braves territory at the 45 by Warren Gatewood. Marcus Marshall, big scamper, 37 yards, and Marcus Marshall. It's Showing you why he set his high school rushing record, beating his brother Keith Marshall's record, who's, of course, a stud at Georgia. Good in the open field. That actually could have been an extra 15 yards with the horse collar tackle. No flag down, though, and it's good to see Marcus Marshall. He had the 49-yard touchdown run earlier. Here's another big hitter. So the offense of Georgia Tech certainly not letting up. It was a tough first series for the D. Pitch by Byerly. Georgia Tech has gone over 400 yards total offense as Matthew Jordan on the run number 11 for Georgia Tech. Got a great player down right here near sideline. I think it's Warren Gatewood. Number 24 for all Corn State. You know, Gatewood is a cornerback, as they tend to him right now, and it's it's that perimeter of these defenses that play against Georgia Tech that they the cornerbacks that aren't used to being in the middle of these these collisions of these cuts of this this good blocking every single snap as we look at marcus marshall he's up to 106 yards rushing in the game on just four carries with a touchdown and he is part of our honda generators power play it's marcus marshall running to the end zone that's a true freshman look at those legs marcus Five foot ten, 209 pounds. He's, he's a good looking young man. You know, he's got some pop and some power there in between the tackles and showing us a couple times here tonight what he can do when he gets out in the open field. That's not a bad start for a true freshman. Would you say, Tom? Four carries, 106 yards in the touchdown. He's got, a, he's got a catch, too, for 24 yards, and that TD run went for 49 yards. We'll come back to Bobby Dodd Stadium in just a moment. for the Braves being helped to the sideline. And here is the play on which he was injured. He's going to come from up top here in the corner. And that's 24. He gets caught up. Actually, it's, it's his own guy. Daniel Franklin yep. falls across the back of his legs. Hopefully, hopefully he's okay. Gatewood, the senior out of Baltimore, such a leader in this secondary, had 16 pass breakups last year to lead the team. Also three interceptions in 2014 for Gatewood. Hmm. Dang. Well, the Braves came out. They scored on their first possession of the second half to make it 48-6. Georgia Tech has rolled up 337 yards rushing. Last year, they went over 300 yards rushing nine times, James, and four times over 400 yards rushing. So Gatewood has been helped to that Braves sideline. Georgia Tech last year ran for 4,789 yards, a school record. A staggering number, and they led the football bowl subdivision Marcus Marshall with over 342 yards per game. That's Marcus Marshall one more time. 
Yeah, Tom, they set school records last year in total rushing yards. You mentioned the rushing yards per game, rushing yards per carry, and the ungodly percentage on third down. Which defense or offense, every coach, that's one of the first things they look at. What are we doing on third downs? You got to get off the field on defense offensively. You got to keep your guys out there. You know, with their effort tonight, they will keep a streak of rushing for over 200 yards in a game, now up to 15 times in a row, and that's the longest in the Bulls subdivision for head coach Paul Johnson. By the way, in his first seven seasons, James, get ready for this one. Georgia Tech, prior to tonight's game, under Paul Johnson, running for 29,042 yards. That's like 17 miles. <laughs> That's the most, and not surprisingly, the most of any team in the bowl subdivision as they come up just a little bit short. So now we got fourth down. I mean, the numbers are just staggering. He's so committed to the system, and it worked so well last year. Just the hiccup in the middle portion in the games against North Carolina and Duke. But other than that, Georgia Tech was superb. Well, it looked like there, you, you saw the reaction of Paul Johnson, Tom, as he brought the freshman Marcus Marshall, who's had a phenomenal game. Big numbers, but it, he's made a couple mistakes, a couple freshman mistakes. It looked like he hit the wrong hole. And Alcorn State turned him back. Just called timeout. Challenge ruling on the field that the runner was down. Plays under review. 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 Did the ball come out? I didn't see the ball come out. Is that... Otherwise, he's, he's definitely short. We know that. We'll, we'll challenge it, but you, you saw Paul Johnson. I mean, Paul Johnson you mentioned it. He, he, pretty, pretty good mood in our sit down. Pretty good mood talking to Jen at halftime going into the locker room. He, not so much right now. Not the way the defense came out of the locker room. And, and right now you get stuffed on a third down. That, you know, you'd like to think, here's one more look at it. You know, a couple bodies on the ground. I mean, there's, there's a, a block not picked up and a guy waiting on him, but Marcus Marshall got an earful when he came. Yeah, the ball did come out of the trail end of the play, but they're ruling that Marshall was, in fact, down. So the Braves lose a timeout on the challenge with 7.29 to go. Paul Johnson, James, 58 wins in his first seven seasons. That is the most in school history. Does he get credit for the great things he's done in the last seven years for this program? He doesn't get the credit that he deserves. He gets some credit from football coaches, the guys that I think matter the most to him. Big fourth down here. Scove is the man to move those chains. You know, fr from his peers, Paul Johnson gets credit. From defensive coordinators that have to go up against him, he yes. gets his credit. From the media, from the, you know, it, this offense isn't sexy enough for, for a lot of people. And you know what? That's fine. That's the way he likes it. It's the way Justin Thomas likes it. Guys like Patrick Scove. Shoot, we're winning ACC Coastals, Orange Bowl championships. Yeah. I, you know what? If you don't like it, that's fine. But we'll wear these rings with pride. We'll, you know, we'll we'll hold our heads high and go try to do it again in 2015. And don't forget how tough they played Florida State in the ACC championship game in early December at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. 37-35, losing to the number four team in the country. And had they beaten them, probably would have knocked Florida State out of the first college football playoff in the top four slots. Yep. And and came from nowhere. Remember, this time last year they were picked to finish fifth. Not in the ACC, in the Coastal, in this division. And then they went and won the thing. You know, a lot of it had to do with that guy, Justin Thomas, people not knowing what to expect out of him. Look at Byerly continuing to fight. First down, almost another touchdown, looking for touchdown number two. He's down inside the four-yard line. Look at that offensive line firing out. That wave and bodies on the ground. There's a second effort by Byerly. And showing you why he's, when he, in a tight game, even last year, you know, he scored the seven touchdowns. He's a great option go-to on the goal line, those powerful legs. And, and that's what's been impressive. Chemistry was a key for this, this offense tonight. Guys seem to be on the same page clicking. Georgia Tech is in the end zone again. It's Patrick Scove. Patrick Scove runs the ball four yards. 
into the end zone for the Georgia Tech touchdown. Third touchdown of the night for Patrick Scove. What a debut in his yellow jacket uniform in 2015. The hat trick. He's one away from his career touchdown mark back at Stanford. And enjoying his teammates slapping hands over on the sidelines. This is a Quite an offense for big number seven. He found his home here in Atlanta. 6'1", 235-pound bruiser just carrying bodies over that goal line and into the end zone. I think he's eating his oatmeal now, huh? <laughs> College football is brought to you by Quicken Loans. The Ego Power Plus Blower. Ego. Power beyond belief. And your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. A late night snack at the varsity. James Bates, what do you have? Well, uh, you know what? <laughs> my bike ride back to my hotel goes right by the varsity, and I know where I'm stopping. Oh, I'm definitely yeah, you, got, you got your workout in earlier tonight, didn't you, James, yeah. on the way over? So I deserve some onion rings in a nice shape. Or, or maybe I could go to Antico Pizza. <laughs> Or both. Yeah, that was the opportunity cost. Oh, what's a guy to do? Bobby Dodd Stadium at historic Grant Field. Opened in 1913, the oldest on-campus stadium in the football bowl subdivision. Dedicated in 1988 to Bobby Dodd, the former coach and athletic director. Bobby Dodd in the early 50s, James, had a 31-game unbeaten streak. You know, Bobby Dodd was also a winner eight straight times against Georgia. Well, the Jackets snapped a five-game losing streak against the in-state rival in perhaps one of the best games all year. That's Butker, 53 yards away to tie it in regulation. And then in overtime, D.J. White, the interception to seal the victory for Georgia Tech. And they win it over well, the number nine team in the country, 30 to 24. What a moment for D.J. White. We talked to him yesterday about that. His eyes just lit up when you mentioned that Georgia game. Well, he, he wasn't shy about it at all. He said, Georgia Tech fans, when they realize who I am, that's all they want to talk about. <laughs> and, and Jen said, you don't mind talking about it, do you? He goes, no way. I love it. Clean old-fashioned hate that rivalry. And like you mentioned, five in a row for the Bulldogs. What a big win for this Georgia Tech team. They were already on their way to the ACC championship game. It just made it a little bit sweeter to turn the tide against then number nine Georgia. Let's check in with Jen on the sidelines. Well, yeah, I remember asking DJ White about how often he gets asked about that interception. And he says, well, pretty much as soon as they find out who I am, they want to ask me about it. I said, do you have anything that you kept as a memento? What else, of course, did he say he had at his parents' house, right? A piece of the hedges from Athens, of course. Why wouldn't he have that? Heck yeah, you have to. I right? think my broadcast partner also has. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. No, yeah, we, you know, it, it actually, our crew, the Florida-Georgia game, usually in Jacksonville, but they were redoing the Gator Bowl then to turn it into then Altel Stadium for the Jags, and so we played at home in a way and, and went up there had a nice win, so you have to do that. It's passing complete, intended for number seven, Jordan. 2014 was an exceptional year for Georgia Tech to the Orange Bowl for the second time under Paul Johnson. And you see those key victories, the win against Clemson on November 15th, 28 to six, and then the Georgia game. Mississippi State in the Orange Bowl, 49-34. to 34. Justin Thomas was the MVP with 121 yards rushing. Three rushing scores and a TD pass. And names that have moved on like Sinjin Days and Darren Waller. Big games also at the Orange Bowl. Days went for 171 yards. And that included a 69-yard TD run in the third quarter. You know, you, you look at that, that last score, the Orange Bowl, BCS game. 49 points on the SEC's Mississippi State Bulldogs. And, and the national perspective of Paul Johnson's team, the national perspective of the ACC, let's face it, you know, outside of Clemson and outside of Florida State, people want to kind of 
downplay how good the ACC is. Well, that's all the proof you need. You know, it, this is this is a league that deserves some respect. When you go head to head, remember they were they were the darlings there for a while last year. Mississippi State, they were the gossip, and people had them. Full start. In the 75 offense, five yard penalty. Third down. Well, the ACC as a whole also for the second straight year sending 11 teams to bowl games and that's a conference record 22 teams over the last two years to bowl games and Georgia Tech by itself James 18 straight appearances in bowl games second best active in the football bowl subdivision they're behind Virginia Tech which has 22 straight bowl games and they have a big one coming up on Monday night it's the rematch with Ohio State again they won a season ago nice play almost another pick there for Georgia Tech they do get a stop there on third down and long and that'll bring up fourth down you know the last two teams to beat Ohio State were from the ACC not just Virginia Tech last year, but right before that, the Orange Bowl, heck of a game when Clemson beat. It was a great win for Clemson. I don't know, Blacksburg, I would love. I've never seen a game in Blacksburg. I'd love for my first one to be on Monday night, Labor Day night. Oh, big one when the number one team in the nation comes to town. They better watch out because those Hokies, they could be really good. They could be the best team in the ACC this year. Taquan Marshall is the deep man for Georgia Tech. 17. And he'll have to shuttle backwards and fall inside the 15. Well, you want to join us next Saturday for an ACC football doubleheader at noon Louisville. Coming off Saturday's 2015 Chick-fil-A kickoff game against SEC Power Auburn. A clash with the Houston Cougars in Cardinal Country. Then at 3.30... Guess what? It's Georgia Tech again. They welcome Nico Marley in the Tulane Green Wave to Bobby Dodd Stadium at Historic Grant Field. Doubleheader Saturday next week on ACC College Football. And you and Wes will be right back here for Georgia Tech and Tulane. I'll be in Louisville with Ovi Mahaley as they yep. take on the Cougars. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll have my Bob Marley references ready. Nico Marley, <laughs> the grandson of the great Bob Marley. And again, that game tomorrow at the Georgia Dome, or Saturday rather, as we play on a Thursday night with the game coming up for Louisville yeah, and against you know, Auburn, the number 16 in the country. Hello. And as, of course, being the pro that you are, Tommy, you pronounce that Louisville right. Louisville. You know, they, they get upset up there when you say Louisville. <laughs> well, let's help educate our viewers okay. on, on another one, because I always thought this was Alcorn State. No. And I think everybody outside of, you know, in Atlanta, anyway, we've talked to, thought it was Alcorn State, and the coaches on the conference call said Alcorn a couple times. We had to do some research. So, football fans, it is Alcorn State, please. Byerly. It'll be Byerly on the carry. We were wondering at first, you know, the Vicksburg, Mississippi product, Jay Hobson. Is it just a little bit of that Mississippi draw, Alcorn? But it's, it's not Alcorn, it's Alcorn. <laughs> Yeah, he was a standout player also in his days at Ole Miss as a defensive back. Told you about his incredible resume coaching. This is his first head coaching job for Alcorn State in the SWAC in his fourth year. Again, this is just the second SWAC opponent that Georgia Tech has ever faced. A couple of years ago, they beat Alabama A&M. Matthew, Matthew Jordan with the leaping move at the tail end of that run. Taquan Marshall, the freshman running back, doing a good job of getting the body on the ground out there on the perimeter. I, I, I started into it a little bit earlier. Here's the second down and short coming up. To slow down this Georgia Tech offense, your corners, your safeties, they've got to be tough as nails. You have to be willing to sacrifice your body to make these reads go take on big linemen, cutting receivers, and look out, here we go again. Marcus Marshall, the race to the end zone, and number 34 wins it for Georgia Tech. Marcus Marshall takes the ball 64 yards for the Georgia Tech touchdown. 64 yards of the run, James Bates, right up the middle. 
Just like his first touchdown and topping it, the first one goes 49. And another big run in between. This one, 64. Watch out, Georgia Tech fans. You're going to feel like the Brady Bunch around here. It's going to be Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. <laughs> He's got 184 yards rushing on eight carries. And as James mentioned, his second touchdown of the game. Watch the guys up front again. We talked about that center earlier. It was Freddie Burden. And in there now is Will Bryan. It's so fun to watch that center for Georgia Tech get down that four-point stance, and it's the, the, the spearhead, if you will, of that charging offensive line. It's, it's, almost, it's almost like, Tom, like a defensive lineman in the goal line stance, four-point stance position, trying to dive underneath, trying to get the, the first lunge. And, and pad under pad, gosh, it's tough to deal with. When you get those those great athletic, physical, strong centers like they've always had come through here, that first step can just be deadly, and that's right where they went, right behind the center and right up the gut one more time for the young pup, Marcus Marshall. 62. It's a six in it. Just a minute and three seconds to go in the third. Again, Georgia Tech scored on its first seven possessions tonight. And really suffocated Alcorn State on both sides of the football in the first half. Braves scored on their first possession of the second half as they bring this one out close to the 15. Good hustle, Terrell Lewis, to get down there first. Well, here's the schedule, that college football playoff in its second year. The Orange Bowl and the Cotton Bowl will be the semifinals. Then it's on to Glendale, January 11th, for that national championship game. After the play, personal foul. Florida State, part of that first playoff. Made it to those semis against Oregon. It was a penalty on the play. It went against the Braves in a personal foul, so they'll move that ball back. Now, I think it might have been offsetting. Well, they are moving the ball yeah, back, so maybe they just the changed seven. it over because they first said it was on Georgia Tech. And okay. The only reason I cared is because it's that would have been the first ten. penalty. All points stay all on the Braves eight-yard line. So they'll put it at the eight, James. Okay, okay you're right. It was on all point state, so. Still zero penalties for Georgia Tech tonight, which is that's pretty good. First game out the gate, about three quarters in the books. Marshall himself with 208 yards, more than the Braves' offense, and that is Lenoris Footman, who gets his first taste of the action as Chase Alford collapses on him. Footman comes in for John Gibbs Jr. Now the final 35 seconds of the third quarter. Gibbs, if he does not return to the game, 8 of 22 for 50 yards and one interception into the eyes of Chase Alford. Former well, walk-on, Mr. Do-It-All, hungry guy, great leader on this football team. Didn't start tonight because they started with the nickel package, expecting a lot of receiver sets and balls in the air. But Alford plays on every special team, and most of the time he'll be out there to start the game for Georgia Tech defensively. At the end of the third quarter, three quarters complete from Bobby Dodd Stadium. Georgia Tech on the scene. Braves did score, but it's still all jackets. to the six lead through three quarters. Our Hyundai game summary. James, 536 total yards for the Yellow Jackets. That's got to feel good, but for Paul Johnson, that big zero right there, that's looking pretty right now here in the fourth quarter. It, it shows you that you've got a, a disciplined football team playing some crisp football right out the gate. This is Footman. That ball came out, and now it bounces out of bounds. Callan made the hit as we check in with Jack. 
Well, guys, some unfortunate news to report from the Alcorn State sideline. Corner Warren Gatewood, you saw, got injured earlier in the game. They have confirmed only that it is an upper body injury, but he is being transported to Emory Hospital. I can see the ambulance pulling up right here. So unfortunate for him. Hopefully it will be nothing too serious, but it's serious enough that he is on his way to the hospital. Ted, thank you, Gatewood. An important part of that secondary for Coach Hobson, who had three interceptions last year but was shaken up here in the second half. And now they're taking all the necessary measures to make sure that he is okay. His teammates have the football on third and six. Flags come out prior to the snap. William Gay, offense, five-yard penalty. Half the distance to the goal, third down. Yeah, that delay of game has happened a few times tonight for the Braves trying to work out the Bucks as Footman has replaced John Gibbs Jr. Georgia Tech defense did a good job against the SWAC player of the year a season ago for this championship team for Alcorn State winning its first SWAC championship since the early 90s, 1994. From his own goal line, Footman with a strike across the 20. And it was incomplete intended for George, who almost came up with the grab. Come on, big senior, hang on to that man. The young thought he might have had that one. Throw that was pretty. Footman with good mechanics on that throw. Footman from the Panhandle of Florida. You know, I like it. His teammates appreciate the effort too. Maybe it was incomplete, but very close to being a positive play. As Gibbs will stay into the game, keep the headset on, stay involved. prior to that punt there by McCraney. Prior to the snap. Timeout. Georgia Tech. So the Yellow Jackets taking a timeout with 13.47 on the clock and leading 62 to 60. What a shot of that Capitol building. It's all Georgia Tech on a Thursday night in Atlanta. That is what I call a bad hair day, James Bates. <laughs> yeah. But a good day to start the college football season on a Thursday night. Privilege to be part of the very first day of the 2015 season. Georgia Tech on its way to a victory. McCraney has trouble with it. Now he loses control, and it's covered at the five. Sean Kagawa, number 44. And McCraney had a little trouble with the snap. It looked to be okay. Well, the snap was perfect. And Georgia Tech surprise. You know, a lot of times you'll send the guy through just to make sure he punts it, make sure there's not a fake. But you had three Georgia Tech players kind of doing just that. Nobody truly rushing the punter. Otherwise, it would have been a safety, maybe even a touchdown. You saw Matthew Jordan in there, also number 11, who made the hit. A flag is out. Based on the flag being thrown. Timeout was called by all court state. So the timeout called, nullifying the flag. The Braves called the timeout. And we will also call a timeout. Fourth quarter in Atlanta. All Jackets. 62 to 6. Brady Swilling is the new quarterback, number four. He tries to spin his way down to the five and gets dropped at the six by Darian Moody. Brooks is also there. So the new quarterback, Brady Swilling, goes 6'2", 217 as a sophomore from Chatsworth, Georgia. He's actually listed as a B-back, but he's got his chance at quarterback. Georgia Tech using the A and B-back system. Rolling up the rushing yardage tonight. It's up to 458 yards on the ground for Georgia Tech. Second down. Swilling. 
diving for the end zone. I think the official ruling him down just inside the one. That's where they'll put it, third down. Here's another look at it. We're going to get what we want. Got some good blocks. This guy's outside on the perimeter. Yeah, that's a good call. Right, right inside. The one is where they'll put it, and he was down. And Darian Anderson, his linebacker from Miami, over there to give him a pop. Pretty good pursuit there by 44 to make sure that Swilling couldn't get to the end zone. But now third and goal from the one. Hot skip and a jump into the end zone. Brady Swilling. Why not? Keep spreading it around, sharing that love. <laughs> Brady Swilling and Abel. Again, doesn't matter who's in there, first string, second string, third string offensive line. Watch them, watch them get low. Get low and drive that initial surge. That's all number four needed to leap over that, that pile and then the goal line. And number 70, Will Bryan, trying to lead the way. 69 to 6 for head coach Paul Johnson, who did express some concern to us yesterday in our meetings, taking on a team out of the football championship subdivision. But his team threw a flurry of roundhouse rights early on in this game. As we go to the Z-Max performance play, Mr. Summers on the grab. What a rocket thrown by Justin Thomas. Had to been back in the first quarter because JT didn't play <laughs> after the first quarter. And it's summertime, ladies and gentlemen, when the ball's in the air this year. About the hands of Michael Summers. Bit of an injury during camp. Glad to see him out there healthy and obviously looking pretty good. You know, I, I found it interesting. You got a lot of the media, a lot of the questions. You, you watch the press conferences, Paul Johnson leading up. Are you worried about your guys get, being able to get up and get excited for an FCS team, you know, a team that they're supposed to beat and supposed to, you know, to play like this against in the first game? Finish it off for this kick here. To which Paul Johnson replies, you know, so much of the year, we put so much into playing football, the off-season workouts, the conditioning, the, the weightlifting, all these practices during training camp, all the practices throughout the week, you only get a few opportunities to buckle up and go play. It shouldn't matter if it's the Clemson Tigers, Florida State Seminoles, Mississippi State Bulldogs, or Alcorn State Braves. And guys like Justin Thomas, we're ready to go, that's for sure. This Georgia Tech team came charging into this one. Those numbers, of course, from Thomas just in the first quarter and a lot of great quarterbacks in this ACC this year. And he's, he's got a chance to be the best. He's, he really does have a chance to be the player of the year in the ACC offensively. How about nine rushing touchdowns tonight for Georgia Tech? You start to look at that scoreboard, James. You say 69 points. Well, what's the most that the Yellow Jackets have scored? You ponder that, and then you look, and you realize they got a long way to go. <laughs> I take you back to 1916 against Cumberland College. Jen, what happened there in that game? Yeah, well, come on now. Everybody knows that score. That's why, if you noticed, I saw somebody had put out after the first quarter. It was a school record for points in the first quarter in the modern era. Yes, yes, the I modern era. Love that Cumberland College beatdown. Oh, by the way, the score was 222 to nothing. Oh, I thought you said it. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, I know. I know you knew it. But it was uh, more kind of a revenge for a baseball loss from the previous season. So they kind of, uh, John Heisman was the head coach. You've heard that name before, Heisman. Coach Heisman was the head coach here at Georgia Tech from 04 to 19, uh, 1919, sorry. And they won the national championship back in 1917, but in 1916, 222 to nothing against Cumberland College. What was the baseball score to merit that? There's John Heisman here in the ring of honor. Brings up fourth down. Oh, took a little bit of defense back then in 1916 to shut out Cumberland College and well, almost to shut out pitch by Ted Roofsgang here tonight. 
The takeaway Titans trying to rip that rock out of there. There's one of two turnovers. Had an interception by Milton earlier in the game. P.J. Davis has been in the backfield all night long from his linebacker position. Adam Gotsis looks strong early. James, you know, it wasn't so much the score of the baseball game. It was the fact that they thought that Cumberland College used professional players. So that was the issue for Coach Heisman, and he made sure he got his revenge. Well, 69-6, Georgia Tech in the lead of the fourth. 25 years since that national title back in 1990 for the Yellow Jackets when they won the Citrus Bowl against Nebraska 45-21. They did have one tie that year. So they went 11-0-1, that against North Carolina. But then they beat number one Virginia in early November. 41-38 on that kick by Scott Sisson, 37 yards, with just seven seconds left. And he was kind enough to join us, join Nicky Noto in the pregame show. Willing puts the ball down on the turf, picks it right up, and might have been a face mask there at the end, but you still hear the pads popping. That's for sure. Nope, good no call. No face mask, just the shoulder pads. 94 Michael Brooks coming in to finish off the play for the Braves. This field has really held up. That's a it was a, it was a concern for a lot of these these guys, the players, and Coach Paul Johnson. Even he, he, late June, I guess it was. Uh, the Rolling Stones had a concert here. Sure. And good job by the grounds crew to get it cleaned up because it was a mess apparently, and it was a mess up until about last week. But we haven't seen a lot of slips. Haven't seen a lot of big chunks of turf floating around. It's willing. Tried to make his way up to the 30. Ran into Terrell Williams. Swilling on the carry. Run down by a host of all point State players. Up well, now just over nine minutes to go here in the fourth. And Georgia Tech well on its way to win number one after winning 11 games last season and going 11-3. and three. In fact, they finished the season. On the punt for the Jackets. Ranked number eight. And that final ranking, by the way, James, the highest since that 1990 national championship. Here's the punt for Georgia Tech. First look, we're getting it, Ryan Rogwell. First punt of the night. He only had 32 punts all of last year. That was an ACC low. Williams yep. got driven back to the 25. Guys know what to do when it's up in the air, that's for sure. Good job covering. James, time for our Delta Fawcett touch of the game. Chris Milton stepping in the passing lane. Interception number one this year after two last year for him. Well, he'll get a, not only does he get the touch of the game, but he'll get a, a takeaway Titan award. The, the takeaway Titans, that's, the, that's been the theme in the last couple years for Ted Roof. Georgia Tech had five interception return for touchdowns last year to set a school record. Six defensive TDs. That was just one shy of the school record of seven set back in 1998 for Georgia Tech. Warford on the completion. He's close to first down yardage, should have it. Jen, you got a little bit more there on that award. Well, you know, defensive coaches, probably all coaches have to get a little creative, and I think that's what Ted Roof and his staff came up with, this takeaway Titan, that's their title for it. Basically, they stress takeaways, as most defenses do, and they just came up with a system of awarding points. They do it in the summer, they do it in fall camp, and then, of course, they do it during the season. Racking up those points with his defense that led the ACC last year in turnover margin. So I think they figured something out. Yeah, and we wanted to see the board. You know how everybody used to have those big colorful boards in the hallway or in the defensive meeting room. Where's the board, coach? Can we see it? And he goes, well, everything's digital now. We just put it up on the big screen. <laughs> and, but they printed out a couple copies for us. Uh, Ted Roof, is, he's a lot of fun to sit down and talk with. He was a great linebacker here for Georgia Tech in the mid-80s. Ted Roof, guys, 
had 25 tackles as a linebacker against the Tennessee Volunteers when he played. 25 tackles in one game. Don't forget on Thursdays, ACC All Access. You want to check your local listings as we go inside the Atlantic Coast Conference. 14 teams strong for football, the 63rd year of competition for college football in the ACC. What a great way to start it. Unfortunately for North Carolina, coming out of the short end of its game tonight against South Carolina. That incomplete over the middle, the final there, 17-13 in Charlotte. Duke has the lead on Tulane, and that's in the first half, 10-0. Wake Forest also posting a victory tonight, James, against Elon. Nice layout by Vessel. Officials time out. Front injury player. And it is Vessel. It's slow to get up. Hopefully yep. he's just got the wind knocked out of him. As is he laid out, midsection exposed a little bit. But you mentioned Tulane. Right now trailing Duke. It's uh, Tulane coming here next weekend. I think we showed the promo for it earlier. And so. Tulane's supposed to be a little bit better football team this year. Curtis Johnson had a young team last year. And, you know, it's, it, you kind of, you approach seasons different ways. You look at Virginia Tech, obviously, there's, you, you don't need to worry about your guys getting up all summer and then going and getting a great workout in condition. Hey, you, you know what's, what's at stake. First game of the season, you got the number one team in the country. Sometimes with a... a a lesser team coming in, the FCS team coming in. You, you know, it's a little bit of a concern. They're going to be ready week one, week two. For Georgia Tech, it's a little bit of an upgrade next weekend. Tulane coming in, and then look out. It's a big trip to South Bend to take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Searcy for the fair catch. Bottled it. Here's that Georgia Tech will maintain possession again. Join us next Saturday for an ACC football doubleheader at noon. Louisville. Coming off Saturday's Chick-fil-A kickoff game against SEC Power, Auburn. It'll clash for the Houston Cougars in Cardinal Country. Yeah, flex those guns. Yeah. We'll see what they can do after that game against Auburn. And then the Green Wave and Nico Marley. Tulane coming to Bobby Dodd Stadium at Historic Grant Field. It's a doubleheader Saturday next week on ACC College Football. Tulane in the house. Last year, Georgia Tech going to Tulane and winning 38-21. Rolled up 344 yards rushing and had four rushing TDs in that victory. There that last shot of that, that promo you saw Keith Kelsey Jr. celebrating the linebacker for Louisville. You be good to him, Tom, next week. I will. I played with his dad. His dad's a great guy. <laughs> Keith Kelsey Jr., I'll tell you what, he's, he's better than dad and better than Bateson. <laughs> he's a heck of a linebacker. He's fun to watch. Him and James Burgess, Sheldon Rankins, I mean, it's Todd Grantham's got another good yep. crew defensively. They do yep. have to replace an entire secondary, yes. and I worry about them a little bit on Saturday, yep. keeping up with the tempo that's going to come at them from the Auburn Tigers. That recruit includes uh, Gerard Holloman, who led all of the football bowl subdivision with 14 interceptions last year. Lorenzo Malden also departing from that unit, but we'll see what they've got. All their quarterbacks saw action last season. Brandon Radcliffe, the running back, will be the focus of the ground game. So we'll see what they have against Auburn, the number six team in the country, coming up Saturday. And that's right here in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome. Yeah. You Saturday mentioned afternoon. That, you know, a lot, and a lot is made about those two offenses, and, and justifiably so. And you've got Gus Malzahn, everything he's done, and Bobby Petrino. But the defenses are very interesting, too. Will Muschamp, the new defensive coordinator for the Tigers, goes head-to-head -head with Todd Grant. Swilling stopped at his tracks. James, you also mentioned that Georgia Tech going on the road at Notre Dame. That game September 19th. Now, the teams have not met since 07. But that was a win for this Georgia Tech program at Notre Dame, 33-3. to And, you know, Paul Johnson has a bit of a history with Notre Dame. When he was the head coach at Navy, he won at Notre Dame. Back in 2004, 46 to 44 in triple overtime. How do you like that? Wow. And that was the first win for Navy against Notre Dame since 1963. So he's been in that situation before with 
the Navy program. He'll take Georgia Tech to Notre Dame September 19th. Work to do. A little bit more tonight and then Tulane next week. We offer 24 months. ACC College Football is brought to you by Works. Leaves are falling. It's Works season. And Hyundai. 10.40 p.m. on the East Coast as that traffic starts to loosen up on a Thursday night in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia Tech so strong in the early going of this game. Kept it up most of the way. Justin Thomas only played the first quarter. But after the first 15 minutes, it was a 34 to nothing lead. For Georgia Tech, they added 14 more in the second quarter, and now 69-6 against the visiting Braves. Oh, the Rat Hats are out for the freshmen. The traditions of <laughs> Georgia Tech. I'm, I'm, this is a tradition-rich program, no question about it. I think that's kind of like bullying, though. Those aren't the best looking. Uh, it's, it's in the spirit of good fun, James Bates. A good fun for this young kid in Florida right here, running it. Yep. And let's check in with Jen. We well, talk about spirit and tradition, and earlier we talked about Ted Roof and uh, his creative ways of encouraging his guys. How about a man named George P. Burdell? <laughs> Familiar to Georgia Tech fans, so this is the first time I'd heard the story. Essentially, he's a fictitious student who has earned multiple degrees from Georgia Tech. One student enrolled, he had two enrollment forms, one for himself and the other one he made up with this guy's name, George P. Burdell. So then he went through and people helped him actually get a degree. They'd finished papers, so he graduated multiple times. He's a member of several churches in Atlanta. Anyway, it's a look it up. It's a Georgia Tech thing, let's put it that way. And this summer, Coach Roop decided to have the George P. Ferdell Defensive Player of the Day. That man is creative, and he's locked into Georgia Tech history. I'll say, uh, well, William Edgar Smith, Jen, what was the young man in 1927 who, who got two forms, <laughs> sent them both in, that George P. Burdell. But what impresses me is that his buddies, he recruited enough people to, to make it happen. To, people had to go take his test. They had to do his work. Right. It's tough enough doing your own work. But you know what? Hey, everybody now, it's worth it now. Like Jen mentioned, and, and Wes Durham was telling me yesterday that you'll, when Georgia Tech plays away games, You'll hear the the, the uh, stadium announcer at away games. Uh, Brian, yes, the ball being snapped. Time out. Time out. Mr. George P. Burdell, please report to the Georgia Tech bus. I mean, I, 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 I said to Wes, I said, why did you never tell me about George P. Burdell? That's the coolest thing I've ever heard of. And leave it up to Ted Roof to use it for motivation. And, and motivation and also to teach his kids about the history of this fine institution. Just some of the some of the fun shenanigans like like those rat caps. Incredible story. This program in its 123rd year. Coach Roof, third year as the defensive coordinator, was the head coach at Duke from 04 to 07. Also been a defensive coordinator at Penn State, Minnesota, and Duke. And he was on the Auburn staff as a defensive coordinator when they won the 2010 National Championship. With Cam Newton as the quarterback, he plays professionally just up the road in Charlotte. Wes handling some professional duties tonight over at the Georgia Dome. He'll be back with you next week against Tulane, and there's that upcoming schedule. Wes will rejoin the broadcast team. I'll be on my way to Louisville with Obi Mohaley. And we told you about the Tulane game and also Notre Dame coming up on the schedule. Notre Dame, not an official member of the ACC, but over the last three seasons, they've played 15 opponents. They will play 15 opponents in the ACC. That's a big one right there, Tom, at Notre Dame. You know, it's here's a chance this weekend for some, some big noise to be made by teams like Virginia Tech we talked about earlier, just, you know, a couple blocks away. The Georgia Dome on Saturday, Louisville has a chance to upset number six Auburn to, to really make some noise early on right out the gate in, in just a couple weeks. Also, early in this 2015 football season, Georgia Tech's got a chance to make some noise of their own. And the way they've played at times tonight, and the way this offense is, shoot, I don't envy anybody out there that has to go up against them when they are clicking, when they've got things together. They obviously have some things to work on. And a lot of those things, fortunately, for Justin Thomas, for Paul Johnson, for this team, 
have to do with, with some of these backups, you know, and, and they're going to learn, they're going to get their reps. And some of, sometimes the first time they're in there in a, you know, college football atmosphere in front of all these new fans has some good and some bad from the youngsters. But for the guys, the best that you expect a lot out of, they were dynamite early. Looks like a third down conversion for the Braves as the clock approaches two minutes remaining. You know, James, after the Notre Dame game, they traveled to Duke and then North Carolina late September, early October. Those are the two games they lost back to back in the middle of the season last year. So I think there's a, certainly a lot to play for in that early schedule for Paul Johnson and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. You know. Jen mentioned a little bit of it earlier off the shop about Ted Roof's defense. In their three losses, they only turned it over one time. They only forced one turnover. That was one interception. They got zero points off of that turnover. In their 11 wins last year, 18 interceptions, 10 fumbles that they forced, 137 points that they scored off of those turnovers. 26% of the time, 26% of the possessions that the opponents had, a turnover was forced by this defense. That'll win your football game. That coupled with a disciplined offense, an offense that takes care of the football. And, and, and what you're saying, the, the, the stretch where they decided, and, and Jen led off the show with, they decided we've got to be more aggressive. We, you know, it's, it's easy when you've got a, a, a ball control offense like Georgia Tech does, it's easy defensively to say, just don't give up the big play. Keep them in front of you. Keep them in front of you. Eventually, somebody's going to jump off sides. Now it's first and 15. Now it's second down and, and 12. It, let them make a mistake. Let them make a fumble. But you have to be aggressive. You can't just sit back the whole time and get some of these offenses. How about this offense? Well, Corn State's still going home. Well, Marvin Ashley made the catch on the long pass from Footman. Tom, I like Footman. The footman's tough. He's in there. He hasn't blinked. He's, he's thrown some good throws. We saw him throw a rope that was dropped earlier in the game. That's a 44-yard pass play. It's a senior. That receiver has to add on those six points. We'll stop the clock with 29 seconds to go. Second and goal for the Braves. And next week they'll take on Alabama State as they go on the road. And then Mississippi Valley State, a home game at Jack Spinks Stadium. Warm in Mississippi. Beat both of those teams last year. In fact, they won eight of nine games from mid-September to mid-November, all the way to that championship game, defeating Southern in the SWAC title game, 38 to 24. That played in Houston, Texas. And we have a timeout on the field. Alcorn State has called its final timeout with 18 seconds to go. Coach Hobson wants to put just a few more points on the board. They scored on their opening drive of the second half. Georgia Tech led 48 to nothing at halftime. A couple of scores in the third and a touchdown of the fourth for the Yellow Jackets. Scove has three rushing TDs. Marshall has two. One for Byerly, one for Swilling. Justin Thomas and Isaiah Willis, too. All rushing TDs. Justin Thomas didn't play a lot tonight, just the first quarter, but he made it count. Yeah, he did. Dancing around, making some good cuts. First touchdown of the game, beating everybody to the corner. And made some good throws as well to some of these new targets he's going to have to get used to this year. Quay Searcy first, and then Michael Summers with that nice touchdown and throw and grab. And here's a good way for these Georgia Tech defenders to get after, after the timeout. 99 is Tyler Stargell. 
And the clock is going to run out of the Braves. Georgia Tech starts 2015 with a resounding victory. 69 to 6 against visiting Alcorn State out of the SWAC. The first ever meeting between the teams goes to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, who scored nine rushing touchdowns on the evening. Everybody got into the act. Multiple players carrying that football for Georgia Tech, and they rack up 476 rushing yards, 553. Total yards for the Jackets. And let's go down to Jen. She's standing by with Justin Thomas. Yeah, Justin, just because he only played the first quarter, that doesn't mean you get out of this part, okay? Just to make sure you know. What do you think of your team's first chance getting out here? What do you think of performance? I think I've um, seen a lot of good things, especially from the young guys coming in. And got, got a lot of film on them for them to watch, and I think it was an overall good performance. I know you and I talked about you needing to make sure everybody was doing their job in the right place. And a casual observer might say, well, look at the score. Of course they were. What did you see? Um, for the most part, I think everybody did what they were supposed to do. They did their assignments, did line up how they were supposed to. But, you know, film, we'll see on how it looks when we watch it. Who's going to get your vote for most impressive debut from one of your backs out there? Patrick Scove got in the end zone a few times. Marcus Marshall, the freshman. I don't know. That's going to be a tough one. Um, you know, Marcus had you know, two good long runs, and we got to get him to hold that ball. But we all, um, Scove had some, some good runs, two tough runs. And, you know, I think, and then Marcus, I think, he, the other Marcus also, I think he could be good for us. And, you know, we got some good backs to, um, to roll with this year. What are your goals for this team, for you this season? You know, this is certainly a good way to get things started. Uh, I think um, tonight was a great start of what we want to do this year. And just each week, um, the, t the competition is going to get tougher, and we just got to come prepared. Okay, well, congrats on the win. Thanks. Thank you. Guys, we've got Coach Johnson standing by, too. Just one second. If you want, we can let him say hello to his quarterback. We'll bring him over here. Hey, Coach. Hey, how are we doing? I'm going to start right off and ask you maybe for a grade on your team's performance tonight. Well, I think it would vary. A special teams wasn't very good. We dropped a couple punts, had a bad snap. But offensively and defensively, we played pretty good. Just ask Justin about some of the backs. Who impressed you? Well, I don't know. They all got to carry the ball. Marcus Marshall had a lot of nice runs, but he had a lot of creases. I thought Patrick Stove ran the ball hard, and most of the A-backs did a good job when they were called on. I remember when you and I talked before the game, you called out some of those offensive linemen as being guys that you were looking to be important to the identity. How did you think they played? I thought they played okay. They only played about a quarter and a half, but the first group was okay. So all in all, did you get what you wanted out of this game? Well, I think so. We've got to grow a lot. We've got to, you know, the competition's going to ratchet up. So we've got to take this and build on it. Well, we're going to get a chance to see how you build on it next week. Thank you, Coach. Okay, great. Thank you. Guys, back up to you. 400 and 76 rushing yards for Paul Johnson's Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Rivaling their game against NC State, obviously stiffer competition last year, but they did run for 479 yards in that game. You know what's coming, James Bates. It's just so hard to defend. <laughs> and it comes at you now. You don't have a training camp to get ready for it. The rest of the opponents, they all had a game here week one, week two, and so forth and so on. There are your final stats. Again, penalties were very big for Georgia Tech. The fact that there weren't any. Only one turnover for Georgia Tech. The defense that created 29 turnovers last year forced three here tonight. Third downs, well, just under the average of last year, almost 60%, three of six. And defensively, for Georgia Tech holding Alcorn State to two of 16, getting off that field when they needed to. 553. Total yards for the Yellow Jackets who start 2015 on a Thursday night in front of a spirited crowd here at Bobby Dodd Stadium against a SWAC opponent only for the second time in the history of Georgia Tech football. But they took care of business tonight and you got a sense of what was going to happen on the very first series for the Yellow Jackets when Justin Thomas scrambled, found some room to run and hit that pylon on an angle and scored the first TD of the game on the night for Georgia Tech. Well, it really was fun not only to watch Justin Thomas come out and, and do what he does best, but, but to look 
and see the guys that he distributed the ball to. All these new faces. You know, Georgia Tech fans, they wanted to know what Marcus, Marcus Marshall was going to look like playing college football. They wanted to know all about this Patrick Scove guy. How was he going to fit in? Well, he fit in really well. I mean, it, the wide receivers, good as well. The offensive linemen, the first string, very impressive. They got out there, like Coach said, a quarter and a half and did everything that was asked of them. Look at big number seven. Boy, is he going to be a load for those guys inside all season long. You've got a change of pace with some of those quicker backs. You've got a guy with a big, strong lower body, Marcus Marshall and the speed when he breaks out in the open. And Scove can run a little bit out in the open as well. Those offensive linemen keep creating those big holes for him. It's gonna be a, an outstanding season for these guys from Atlanta GA. Marcus Marshall ran for 184 yards in the game and there he goes. 64 yards for the score that made it 62 to six. And the final count, 69-6 for the Yellow Jackets. The number 16 team in the nation with a victory to start the season. We'll come back to Atlanta to wrap it up right after this. It's intelligent. Well, the students still celebrating the 69-6 victory by the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech to start the 2015 college football season. James Bates dominating and devastating tonight for Tech. Seven different players for the Yellow Jackets scored a touchdown. I think the only guy that didn't get into the end zone tonight was George P. Burdell. <laughs> nice start for Maybe the Jackets. Maybe in the future, he may show up in the box score. He'll you be never around. Know. He'll be around. Once again, that final score, 69-6. Georgia Tech wins it. Don't forget the doubleheader coming up next week. Houston and Louisville to land in Georgia Tech. For Jen Hildreth, James Bates, and our outstanding ACC football production crew, I'm Tom Warby. Saying so long from Atlanta, Georgia. The Jackets on top of the Braves to open up the season.